like, what? <laughs> and we're like, I think we're like, if we give us a thumbs up, we're like. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, oh goodness! Welcome uh, along to uh, I forgot who we are. We are we sorry. We are D8 Dungeon, and you are joining us this evening for One Shot Night Stand, a monthly stream where we take a an entirely different system, a one page RPG, uh, and we give it a go. We just. Just, we just kind of see what kind of shenanigans and whatnot we get up to. And this is the very first one that we're doing. And you'll see some familiar faces are joining me at the... Oh, God, if I say digital table, does that sound very like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I hate it. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> joining me at the digital table, you'll see some very <laughs> familiar faces. <laughs> um, I am joined this evening by Fiona, Amber and Eilish from D8 Dungeon. Um, and they have promised to be on their best behavior uh, because we have a special guest for this episode. <laughs> we have a special guest. And we are joined by Janet uh, from Octagon. And Ooh. it's it's PRO, Janet. I got that right. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Public relations and promotions officer for Octagon. And those who don't know what Octagon is, it's the Irish National Science Fiction Convention. It's been running for the last 33 years. Nice. That's... Oh my god, I'm three years older than Octacon. I feel either Octacon's <laughs> old or I'm old. <laughs> Octacon has an, uh, a really brilliant lineage and it started in 1990 and the first guest of honour was Terry Pratchett. Oh, uh, oh wow. If anybody's interested in who else our guests of honours have been over the years, you, there's a Wikipedia entry or you can have a look at the website, mm -hmm. octacon.com. And oh. this year we're taking place on the 15th and 16th of October, and Michael Carroll, who's an amazing writer, um, who was a former chair of Octocon, who currently writes for 2000 AD, is our guest of honour. And we've Ooh. two fan guests of honours. Um, because of COVID, we didn't get to celebrate our 30th year properly. And we so we have a fan guest of honour, which is uh, Helen Ryder. And she's the person who ran the very first Octocon. She's the very first chairperson. Very and cool. we also have her wife Philippa Ryder who was on the committee and then went on to become chair and just recently became CEO of Dublin Pride so yeah, um, cool. so we've got lots, they have lots of amazing stories over the years to, to share with us that's, that's very cool lovely. and we will we'll drop links and stuff into the chat and stuff if people want to check out the uh, Octagon on Twitter and then the website as well we'll drop those in um, Thank at you. some stage or at the thing is but um, <laughs> yeah I got I was very fortunate enough last year to participate in one of the online uh discussions and i had <clears throat> one i felt like the stupidest person because i was surrounded by all these like really great and awesome people you're like oh, okay, okay now i that's I wasn't... normal for your first time on a panel at octacon you're like why am i here why yeah. did it come here i'm not sure i know anything and then the discussion starts and you realize nope why do you not think? yeah that and i like and that was the that was the best part of it is like about 10 minutes into it i was like Oh my god, I'm not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> or I am, but I'm really good at pretending not to be. Um, I it was it was an absolute blast. If you if you haven't been before, I would totally recommend um, checking and it out. This year we're getting to run in Croke Park. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. that's awesome. awesome. Um, Very cool. Yeah, uh, we are. Uh, Oh, thanks very much, uh, Shimini. I'm having, I'm keeping an eye on 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 the the chat there as well. Uh, really appreciate uh, that. Uh, slightly nervous, but thank you. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, I already kind of briefly said what one shot nightstand uh, is about. One day I am going to slip up and say one nightstand shot, um, and that's just going to happen. And we're just going to have to deal with okay. it. Okay, won't happen on the first one. What what uh, cocktail is that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, we have to come up with one now. Oh. Uh, but we've um, for the for for our our, our, our very first one, um, and because we're huge fans of uh, of their work, uh, we have pulled the Beast uh, from Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor. And <clears throat> if you're new to the system, and again, we'll be popping up information on uh, on where you can pick it up uh, and stuff like that. If you want to run it yourself and run it better than I will, uh, by all means. Um, but to give kind of a quick overview of the, the system and what it's about before we dive straight into it, uh, it is effectively a horror game set in 
far eastern Europe at the turn of the 18th century uh, or the yeah turn of the, turn of the 18th century and uh, a village or town is being played by an unknown horror known only as the beast uh, and the local baron has employed blackmailed uh, and appointed uh, four or five individuals to go hunt down the beast uh, and discover what it is what its weaknesses are and deal with it um, and if they fail to do so he's just going to blame them for it uh, and that'll and like you know like all those good stories and the problem just goes away then uh you know for for it isn't live gets sacrificed and the, and the, the whole thing goes away this is a very narrative driven uh game uh there are some mechanics but it's a one page uh rpg so it's very very clean and very simple to run effectively up to the point that players need to take an action it's very much driven by dialogue and engaging with npcs and each other at any point where a player has triggered what the dm might see as an action or the player might note is an action we roll dice and then that dice is triggered either as an easy roll uh, an average roll or a difficult roll and the number of dice uh changes depending so the dm will roll d10s or d20s depending on the scenario um and the player will also roll d10s and add any bonuses that they might have so if they have an appropriate background if they have an appropriate tool or if i just feel generous um which never happens which never. might happen to <laughs> janet but not the rest of you uh, <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> you were all very mean to me before chat started including janet um we have the chat logs i will release them after this uh, <laughs> Luis. <laughs> um, Luis, delete <laughs> the aim of this is to discover what the beast is learn its weaknesses and put it down um as i mentioned this is a horror game uh, so descriptions might be a little bit vivid might be a bit nasty it might be a little bit gory um if Premise? i yeah, I promise. Um, <laughs> I promise you. But if I feel like we're coming up to it that I think could be a potential line or veil, even for chat, I will preface that with a bit of a warning. Uh, we've already discussed lines and veils here amongst the players. Um, so we have those set in stone. But if I think I might be touching on a part that might be a bit sensitive to some people beyond the realm of horror, I will always let you know. Okay. So if anybody wants to mute the thing or <clears throat> just turn away or turn off the stream, I'll let you know in advance. But shouldn't happen. Uh, hasn't had hasn't had to happen since. So without anyone having questions. Very good. I'm asking you a lot, not chat. Just chat and play. <laughs> what do we have to do to not let you kill us? Um I will take 50 quid. Um like literally you can pay for me 50 euro right now. Right now? Right now? I can <laughs> <laughs> I have two dollars. <laughs> do we have to discover what or who the beast is, or do we need to actually eradicate or get the beast to move on? Like, what is the what is the win conditions? The win conditions here are the beast in whatever you again. If you if you think moving it along will work, by all means, you can attempt that. But the weaknesses that you will uncover will kind of point out to what the nature of this beast is, what it might be trying to do. And in some cases, moving it on might be the easiest. Uh, that's not the case in this one. Um... <laughs> Spoilers! I, I don't think we've got a big enough rolled up newspaper. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Get the wooden spoon! And you have a um, shovel! So, with, uh, with that said and done, um i th think we're good to to start um we're good to start everybody good everybody happy um and what i'm going to do is rather than doing the whole my name is fiona and i'm playing x i'm going to we're going to start into it and then i might just kind of give a nod over to your character if you want to give a, a bit of a description as to who they are and maybe what their role is in the village and we can kind of go from there um <clears throat> but i have a little i've just to start this off on a semi-professional note um it is the 4th of january 1756 some say that's actually a blessed day um I, no i'm not <laughs> um, uh, we find ourselves in the village of visiva located in the far east of romania along the banks of the port river the village run by baron von fragner a blow-in 
lazy boorish man who inherited the lands from his well from the previous uh baron von fragner uh is fairly reluctant to involve himself in the running of the village. He is, by all accounts, according to the villagers, an incompetent, ill-mannered, and utterly disliked by all. So, kudos for me. <laughs> Over the past few months, there have been a number of strange and escalating incidents. Just before the start of the autumn season, some of the locals, as well as travellers on the road to and from Visiva, have reported seeing a terrifying figure. A twisted shape that stalks and lurks in the shadow of the trees that line the edge of the woods. In December, several farm animals were found slaughtered, torn to pieces by something very large, leaving very little behind other than strands of hair, chunks of flesh and blood. Two weeks ago, old Ivan, a farmer, was found dead just on the edge of his farm where the stone wall meets the woods. The majority of the man was missing. All they were able to use to identify him was the wedding band that he wore on his right hand. Four days ago, a young couple, Eric Blut and Anya Marovic, were found dead in the woods. The pair were found in a most gruesome state and rumours have begun to circulate just how much of their bodies was found. Our game begins on Friday. A meeting has been called by the Baron, utterly annoyed and perturbed by the banging on his door at all hours of the day and night, the cries of the villagers to deal with the creature that lurks in the woods have finally reached his ears. And if nothing but to save himself some peace and get a good night's sleep, he has lowered himself uh, to have and host a town hall meeting villagers, farmers, hunters, even some local merchants who travel to and from the village have found themselves taking seat on the hard oak pews in the church in the square of the village of Visiva. Baron von Fragner, a man in his late 30s, early 40s with wisps of peppered grey hair, Dark circles under his eyes, runs his fingers around his temple, <clears throat> clears his throat uh, and casts a look about. You find his eyes linger on each of you for just a, a moment as he's kind of taking the crowd, as he's taking this audience who've gathered in. And he takes one step back and reaches into his pocket and takes out a small little box and dabs a little cloth in it and then holds it to his nose. Very well, I have decided to meet with you all. Could you please, in an orderly and very polite and quiet fashion, tell me exactly what it is you want me to do about the beast? Stop it. Stop the beast. Like, do something. It's killing people. His eyes drift towards uh, to you, Diana. What does what does the Baron see? Um. So she's she's slim but muscular and sort of that um. I guess sort of runner's body you know like she's 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 a hunter so she's always out in the woods she's very athletic um she's in sort of leather uh trousers and a vest um she's she's a bit of you know uh, a like belt across her chest with some pockets in it for some supplies and a dagger on her hip and not quite what I'd say fits into the village. Um, she doesn't really spend a lot of time around people, so she's she's definitely a bit odd. <clears throat> uh, with all the uh, respect, madam, um, that a woman of your esteem uh, carries, would you could you perhaps stand closer to the window? There's a aroma 
Uh, I would also hazard that a, a woman of your uh, disposition and attire is probably better suited for hunting the beast than I am. Why have you not stopped it? Because this isn't my village. I can't do it by myself. I don't even know what it is. You raise an excellent point. I have heard that there is a boy in the village who claims to have encountered it. Is is he here? Has he bothered to show up? <clears throat> uh, dirt clears his throat. Okay, if you could stand up, please, and enunciate. Oh, um, yes, well, it was... Uh quite dark and I but it was very tall very hairy gruesome in fact that's and... most of the people who have arrived oh no it, this was not a man it was a beast the crowd around you kind of starts to murmur a little bit Dirch uh, and you just hear kind of a he's faking um, coming from it <laughs> I am not faking I saw it with my own eyes. What you described, uh, young man, does that, and he kind of looks uh, at you, Diana, help in any way? You're looking for something big and hairy and gruesome. And not the person, apparently. I mean, there's bears and wolves and, and all sorts of creatures out there. Is there any more detail? I know what bears and wolves look like. It was neither. Well, then I definitely can't handle that on my own. Um, well. Would you ever just do what the Baron is meant to do? Would you ever just, you know, put a bounty up? Would you ever just get a bunch of people to go and get this solved? That's, that's, you know, you're the baron, you're the person in charge of the land, and the people on it. Did your predecessor not leave any notes on how to do this? <laughs> I take it you are the midwife? Yes, I am Mrs. Turner. I am the midwife. <laughs> I also do my best for all the folk around here that need us. Wonderful. Uh, and if you could donate a couple of bars of soap to the village, it'd be really useful and you might find it less frequent around here. Frequent! <laughs> I, I love it. I take your point. I will see what I have left that I might be able to offer. I, I think the most important thing now, Mrs. Turner, is to maybe stay calm. We, we we don't even know if there's anything out there. So if you would just take so a bit, breath. So bits of bodies, both cattle and people, are just dropping out the sky, unrelated to anything. I, I just don't think there's any need to be hysterical about it. I, I, as Dirch said, it's most likely a bear. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. It's the opposite of what I said. Hysterical. So a woman speaking her mind plainly in her own community, where I've seen half of them into this world, is hysterical. Well, that's really good to know, Baron. Uh, and Mrs. Turner sits back. Um, she's sitting close to the front. She's a lady in her late thirties with her hair swept in bun. She wears mostly dark brown clothing, which would be the type to hide blood and other things. She wears <laughs> her. Her clothes are sturdy, but cut a little better of the other people in the town. Isn't it lovely <laughs> that the women get a great say here? <laughs> well done, Mrs. Turner. Oh, oh yes, we are in your house. Um... Hello, hi everyone. And Father Radomir is going to stand up and his, his collar is starched within an inch of his life and he's going to Christ. Smooth. Smooth Dennis Classic. Hello, hi everyone. I know I'm new here, just to blow in, but it's lovely to see you all. And this beast. Well, now, search. I'm sorry, son, but we'll have a chat later. But um, uh, I'm afraid, Baron, that it's a bit unfair that everyone has to pay for a full size coffin when we're only putting, we're only kind of filling half of it. So I think if we get this problem sorted. 
we might just help the community a little bit. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And I'm just going to sit back down. And what does Father Radimir look like? <laughs> <laughs> Young, fresh out of the seminary. <laughs> His ma, his ma's from Ireland, and his da is from a little village a bit outside of Vesiva, and he booted his son straight over to the other side of the world to let him see where he. I came wonder from. why. <laughs> he said, "Go off there and see what it's like over that side." So here I am, and everyone prefers my predecessor a bit more. So we're trying to just make a few friends and maybe find God along the way. It's not was... what everyone wants. Mm. <laughs> the, at this point the crowd are like yeah everybody it's, it's getting a bit it's getting a bit noisy for the baron and he just <sighs> i really don't need to be here uh okay i have a solution i think taking mrs turner's advice uh on board uh i have formulated a plan that I think is really going to be the best for all involved. Um, under the the power afforded to me as the Baron and the overseer of these lands, the farms and the forests, as Mrs. Turner kindly pointed out that I am solely responsible for, I think it best that I put my strengths as a supervisor in action. And I think, I think we really need to get people who know their way around the Siva. So, Mrs. Turner, Diana, Dirch, and uh, Father Radimir, as a way of ingratiating yourself, I think, into the community, perhaps it might be best that you you take this on as well. The four of you are are more than capable of dealing with whatever this bear is. It's a bear. Father well, Radomir's gonna just elbow dirt. Come on there. What Chill are up. you doing? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the whole thing needs to be dealt with in about three days um, for no reason in, at all. Uh, so if you could just see to it that this is done as cleanly and as quietly as possible. I'll... You have full reign of the village under my authority. You are deputized by oh. me. The four of you are solely now responsible for dealing with the beast. Thank you. This is the opposite of what I wanted. And he waves. <laughs> he, he, he goes out of the back door of the church. And the congreg- there's, there's people in the congregation crying at the idea of the four of you in charge. <laughs> George just puts his hand on the priest. <laughs> no, no, this is not good. That was a very rousing speech. Well, <sighs> Diana. Oh, it's more work for busy women. Never ends. Never ends. What's it like? What's what like? What? Being a woman? Being a woman. What do you do with yourself all day? <laughs> oh, you know, by the time you get up and figure out what the men in your life need to do, what the church wants you to do, what the kids want you to do, and then sort out your hair. Sure, that's the day gone. Well, you got your priorities <laughs> right. Well done. Ah, I see, this is why I stay on my own. <laughs> ah, no, you're one of us now. We're a team. Rather not. Rather not. Dirch, uh, your you see your kind of your grandfather shift a bit uh, in his seat uh, on the opposite side of you. Uh, he's not obviously so much between you and the priest who's apparently sitting beside you. Um, <laughs> you uh, he kind of he just kind of looks at you, uh, Dirch. I, I I know you have things that you have to do, but uh, lad, you are. This is probably best left to. And he gestures that, and then he kind of points at Mrs. Turner. Really, I. There's no. Every man and beast on this world has a fear of Mrs. Turner. For good reason. (laughs) I have met the woman. Perhaps you come home then and you give me a hand on the farm and we lead them to their. Yes. Beast hunt. I don't want to see that thing again. And he kind of gives your shoulder a squeeze. Sure, lad. 
I'm sure it was just a, a big hairy stag, wasn't it, Dirch? Oh, he's gone. Oh, oh okay. he's gone. I scared him away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he, he's gone to find God. He's gone to find God. <laughs> Maybe God has taken him. I'm the game. The beast got him. Hello, <laughs> Hello everyone. Hey, Welcome to the beast. Oh, oh, there he's back again. Don't worry there. Sorry, um, Louise. God I feel in the bad. sky. It, for some reason, the whole... Fiona's the GM now. No, that's fine. All right. So, your search. Okay. And I'm Fiona. And Eilish, you're me. Oh, my God. Oh, my dream. Uh, so sorry. Uh, I didn't do anything. It just dropped. <laughs> he went home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the things are happening. <laughs> he went before. back to his home planet. <laughs> Um, Mrs. Turner will approach Dirch and his grandfather and say, Now, lad, do you not be disappearing? We want to be having words with you. And if I remember rightly, Maris, didn't you have a strange encounter in the woods back in the day? What is she talking about, grandfather? Well, you don't need to tell me about it, but you know what? You sh the two of you should have a bit of a talk. And if there's anything in common from that you still both remembered that'd be useful and then which that she just goes out the church to, get, to talk to people that are to do the, the busybody thing of being by the church door no, so if anybody wants to talk to her tell her things and, then, a minute. and she has to give she has to give uh, a pulses to the, the, the newest member of the community so the child's can there with croup okay. no one's getting any sleep oh. <laughs> especially, especially the poor baron Oh. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he still has croup. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, Marius, your grandfather, Dirch, uh, just kind of uh, with the kind of the the nudge from uh, Miss Turner. <sighs> Look, lad. I'll tell you on the way home. All right, we'll 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 make our way out, and we'll just. It 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 was nothing. It was a trifle of a thing. I, I. I, I Look, it, it, sir, if you've seen this thing, I really need to know. I I can't find this thing without knowing what I'm looking for. I, I was, playing with friends. We were supposed to. We were supposed to be tending to my my grandfather's uh, herd of goats. Uh, one got out. We chased it into the woods and uh, fell. I, I I lost my bearings, and and he kind of gets down a bit low. And the next thing I I heard somebody call my name. I heard a a voice call my name. What kind of voice? It was very strange. The voice reminded me of a dear friend of mine, but she had passed the last winter. Perhaps I didn't... it was the beast? Svetlana was six. I don't understand how, and there was no bodies. There was none of this. There was, he looks, he kind of looks at the, the front of the church where Mrs. Turner and there is like, it's literally like a traffic stop system. Like people are like, uh, she's just checking in with people as they kind of file past. Um, but, uh, you get the sense, uh, and I'm uh, Father uh, Radimir, have you gone to the front as well with Mrs. Turner to like do your job, oh, or are I'm you just kidding. letting her take the reins? No, I'm kind of invested in this conversation. So <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> fixing the pews. <laughs> <laughs> fixing the pews. <laughs> I'm just having I'm a little the meal and bits back up. <laughs> <laughs> fixing the pews. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very interested in gossip, uh, so he is. Okay, so Diana and um, Dirch, uh, you both, being the two kind of active participants in this kind of conversation, 
both of you get the sense that uh, Marius, there's a little bit more that he's not saying, he's not telling you everything. My niece has gone missing. And I think this beast has something to do with it. I implore you, sir, to please tell me anything you can. He kind of on hearing that he looks at Dirch. Um, and Marius still sees his 20-year-old grandson as like a toddler. He uh he, he's just that overprotective uh, sort of helicopter grandparenting thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's always taking care of the lad. And when you say your niece has gone missing, it kind of it catches him off guard a little bit. And he takes you kind of by your elbow, uh, Diana. And he just kind of turns you away from Dirch and Father Radomir, who is fixing the pews, uh, <laughs> just checking to make sure, you know, that they're... <laughs> Still pews. pews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Solid wood right there. I I don't wish to see this in front of the lad. Diana, I I am very sorry about your niece, but the boy is sensitive and he he has a tendency to work things up in his mind. He is a he is a very gentle lad. And he just kind of takes a step away, kind of guiding you. I heard Svetlana call out. She said my name. I heard where it came from, and when I turned around, what I saw was neither man nor beast. It was a... Oh no holy thing its face was empty but for a moment it looked like little Svetlana and it was haunched down like a dog it had terrifying claws but it was no bigger than a rabbit it called out my name and I ran did it follow you did you see it do anything no, I, I made it, I made it back to the edge of the woods, out into the field, and I didn't dare turn back to look until I made it, and I could see my home and my father working. And when I did, when I finally reached it, and my my legs were so tired, I turned back. And she was there at the edge of the woods under the dark of the trees watching me calling my name where in the woods was this does that place still stand my father's farm became my farm And he kind of pulls it away. I have, we have work to do. Uh, um, you, you take care of yourself, and I'm, I'm sure you will find your niece. I'm sure she will be okay. Of course, thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Uh, and he kind of blesses himself, and he kind of gives you a look, Dirch. And he shimmies past the uh, the bottleneck of parishioners uh, at the door, um, kind of paying no heed to to anybody. How's Dirch looking right now? 
smiling like that. <laughs> Sitting <laughs> in that head of his. <laughs> no, she's, uh, or he's going to stare at, after his granddad and then turn back to Diana and just say, what? What did he say to you? Something very scary, I'm sure. Likely a tall tale, but look, any any information is appreciated. Well, did he see this beast the same as me? Not quite the same, no. Um, quite a different description, actually. So look, I'm sure, you know, he, he saw it when he was a young child. I'm sure something just spooked him at the edge of the woods. Look, you follow him along there now. I'm going to whip around. You know what I'd love to see? A biblically accurate angel <laughs> eyes and wings. And sometimes there's these rings around them and sometimes they're on fire. Wouldn't that be lovely? No. I think it would be great. Imagine what they tell us. Oh, all and... those secrets they tell us. It sounds much better than what you saw, Dirch. I still believe you. Come to confession next week, okay? <laughs> tell me how you're lying about this beast. <laughs> Come on now, up you get. Get out now. <laughs> He's just gonna like slowly slide out of the pew and just follow his granddad to the door. I'll go over and uh, take out a rag and just scrub with the little patch <laughs> that dirt was sitting in. Just get, get that out. Get the lies out, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All the same. Uh, I know. All the same. Dirch, you make your way to the, the the front door and you see that your grandfather's already kind of uh, out onto the, the dirt road, uh, heading kind of up to the centre of the square. Uh, there's still a gaggle of people all around Mrs. Turner who are, they're all having, it's like, it's, it's one conversation. It's a cluster of voices, but they're all talking about animals getting mutilated, they think, or... Uh, a dog going missing here or seeing strange things in the woods um, and you just hear ooh, what was that? <laughs> the beast <laughs> the uh, um, when uh, passing down the road uh, Violet and Dirch uh, the crowd goes quiet as Elsbeth crosses paths uh, with Marius and everybody locks eyes on the local witch and most of the congregation bless themselves when they see her and she lets out kind of a holler of laughter uh, <laughs> hitches up her skirt and kicks some dirt um, and just continues down the road um, half humming to herself uh, with a basket drooped over her right arm Well, I heard before, you're very yeah, sorry, go before, on. Before Dirch can get past um, Mrs. Turner, her hand shoots out. She grabs an iron grip on the, the on his belt, the side belt, so, uh, and she uh. keeps having the conversation, but he's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Release me, woman. <laughs> I need to have a word with you, lad. Calm down now. Hang on a sec. I'm nearly done. Dirch is terrified, so he's going to stay put. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Turner, it, it, it is as I was saying. Um, our horse, uh, we found it in the stable. It, well, we found some of it in the stable. Was that the one that was going lame that it's... you were trying to sell? Ooh. And he kind of looks at where he's standing, the farmer kind of, he's outside the church, so he doesn't feel as bad. Uh, Guilty. Uh, I will talk to Father Radomir next week at confession. Um, that might be a wise thing to do. Uh, it would be very strange if it at most of it but left that lame leg behind, uh, don't you think? The <laughs> legs were gone. It, it left It left some of the jaw. It was awful. You need to turn that air over good and well. If you're going to have any more horses in there, the last thing you want is something nasty, a spirit coming up out of that and plaguing the other horses. Uh, Be well to turn that soil over well and not put a horse in that stall for a good three months. He blesses himself. How do, how do you know this? So who? And he kind of locks eyes with Elsbeth. Her back kind of turned to everybody. She's still humming to herself. 
Bloodless, blood sickness takes many a poor woman and leaves many a poor man a widow with little ones to look after. Of, 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 of course, Mrs. Turner. Um, and uh, his his wife's kind of standing next to him, like she's a frail whip of a thing. Um, and uh, she, she again, she kind of blesses herself and she kind of gives you a nod. Uh, you you've literally delivered all six of her children, um, and they're swarming around her. Um, she looks absolutely exhausted, uh, and her husband kind of leads them away. Um, Bless that poor woman. She's a lost child to put up with. Hopefully God will spare her anymore and the six of them might live. <laughs> and everyone blesses themselves at that as well um, when you when you say it. Uh, a lot of people are kind of dispersing and you see that there's a small... Uh, like Christina, the owner of the Drowned Duck, the, the, the inn on the Market Square, uh, has kind of pushed past, kind of chest puffed up well, Mrs. Turner, you are obviously uh, very busy with what you have to do. If anybody else uh, would like to do anything else, uh, maybe have a drink and get away from all of this. Um, Mrs. Turner will adjust her grip from his belt to just above the elbow where the tendons oh. are. So he's definitely not going anywhere. <laughs> here, and says, um, that's really good, Christina. I am sure if people need to talk need to talk things out shocking things have happened and i'll call in to yourself and i'm sure i'll have, I'll have a hot sup soon oh you, of course the, the drink always tastes better when you're in the establishment Mrs. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah she rolls her eyes that it can always be heard uh when she does it um and there is, there's a small kind of gaggle of uh, kind of a farmer and a hunter or two that are kind of following behind her I'm looking to see how your slaw turns out. The pickling wasn't great last year. Hope it'll be better this year. <laughs> well, it was much better than the bread that you, well, the bricks that you called bread. <laughs> and uh, she kind of gives a wave. It's that kind of like, ha ha, we're friends, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever got the sweet sweet and bad bread. That's all I'll say. <laughs> they couldn't oh, pass sweet. anything for a week. <laughs> what was the turner? Christina's not a fan of me. The first time I went there, I was on the toilet for about 24 hours. And the poor woman, she heard me call it the dysentery duck. And ever since then, I don't think we're friends. I don't think she likes me very much. But I'm more than willing to try again. Let's well, forgive and forget. So. Well, dysentery travels in the waters. And, you know, we're lucky to have the river here. So I don't think it's that. But I'd be, inviting, I'd be inviting those pickles. Oh, oh, he knows it. Knows it. Avoid the pickles, everybody. Everybody, the pickles. Most of the congregation have left the church. Nobody <laughs> talked to, talk to Father Radomir. They all talked to Mrs. Turner. No, nobody is, likes me. It is the four of you standing there under the late afternoon uh, Friday sky. And as the four of you kind of find yourselves stood at the, the, the door of the church, there's a rumbling of thunder. And then it's, there's just a heavy downpour of rain. How old is Dirch? Like 20-ish. All right, so. So we can get a couple of brandies or scrumples into them and try to <laughs> find out more about the night. <laughs> I mean, I won't tell sure. him if you don't. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure they were drinking by like 10 back in the 1800s. So. <laughs> I would just want to check, you know. Also, if he's that bit older, it might take a bit more. There you go. Mm. Oh, I break out the sheep liniment. Don't you love the rain? Isn't it lovely? The fields will be absolutely swollen with grain. Thank the Lord. Now, let's go get swollen ourselves in the lovely dysentery <laughs> dog. Why is everybody laughing? I don't I don't like the sound of this dysentery. Oh, well, it's only a joke, lad. Come on now. I just don't drink the water, okay? I, I really should follow my grandfather. Ah, he'll be fine. Come on now. There won't be any farming to do this late at night in the rain anyway. Just come have a drink. It's, it's the middle of the day, is it not? <laughs> it's late evening, right? It's, it's early. Early. getting dark. It's January. Yeah. There's it's, nothing it's... there's nothing in the ground and there's nothing going in the ground till spring happens. There's animals to be tended to. Well, not for long. <laughs> oh. oh well. 
Come on now, let's talk tactics. Isn't that what we say? You know what, Dirk? That would be a really good idea, actually, if you could do a run around. Because I, I keep count of all the children, but I can't always keep count of all the cattle. So if we actually knew who would ask what animals and what animals there are, and maybe we would need to round them up somewhere safer. Like there's nothing up in high pasture this time of year. No, I don't. I, I'm going to, I'll go get the drink and maybe uh, maybe Diana can do that. No, I well, Dirk could do the do the, the rounds of the of the quickly of the homestead. Do you think you'd be able for that, lad? Yes, I I believe that would be fine. And Diana, would you go with him to keep an eye on him? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, of course. still struggling with the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> no, she no, she's let it go and she's patting them on the okay. shoulder. Okay. <laughs> I'm. I, I I will go count the cows. I'll help count the cows. Just that's so we... how I'm best used right now. That's because yep. three could go missing, and we don't know how many there was. Do you have your numbers, lad? Do you know how to count? Yes, I know how to count. Put on you. Off you go. So can I get some of that brandy to go? <laughs> <laughs> it's holy wine, actually. <laughs> Okay, at this point, uh, Violet and uh, Father uh, Radimir, I'm, 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 I keep going to call, call you Ramadir. Uh, <laughs> Daddy Raddy. <laughs> uh, you're, heading, you're, you're heading to the Drowned Duck to maybe talk to people inside and see what you can uh, ascertain. Um, and Diana and Dirch, you're heading to the farms to talk to the farmers and get kind of an idea of animals and what they have and if they've noticed anything yeah yeah okay um what we're gonna say uh is because because you're you're going out you're kind of going off to give a maybe kind of talk um to kind of quite a few different people in dirt because you know the a lot of the farmers and diana to be fair you would as well having maybe dealt with kind of foxes or badgers yeah. that might have been trying to like snatch chickens or you know whatnot most of the farmers are fairly open to talking to you all and you have a good idea of what they have like farming here isn't uh it's more for kind of sustaining the family more than anything else it's not it's not making these people rich uh it's just it's keeping them alive um most have a cow too if they're lucky between them um what you learn is even where their even where their animals have not been slaughtered, both of you learn that all the animals every night since December have made a f like and it, you thought Dirch maybe it was just your own just kind of being a bit restless and wanting to get out into the field or whatever, but every every animal, cat, dog horse, goat, cow, pig. I'll just keep naming barnyard animals because I was really good in primary school. Uh, <laughs> all of them are either on edge or are howling or screaming at night. And this has been going on well in well into the winter. Something is something is spooking the creatures, these animals at night. It's like they can sense something else. Other thing you learn, uh, and Diana, you you pick up on this more so, having having stopped by that uh, that farmer who was in the middle of digging a hole in his uh, stable uh, uh, to turn the the soil. Uh, you catch him just as he start. He's about to start. And when he said it was gruesome, he meant it was gruesome. There, the wall, it, to you, it looks as if the horse burst. It, it there's, <laughs> there's only strands or strings even of this animal left. You see the part of the jaw. It's been broken. Like it, it, it wasn't just it wasn't cut through. It wasn't. It, this has literally been 
broken off. Um, there's nothing really left of the horse. There's no, there's no lame leg. There's no, the bones are gone, bar this small chunk of its jaw. I assume I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> no, you've, you've, you've come across animals' carcasses. You've come across cattle carcasses. Even dirt, yeah. even you have. If they've been attacked by a wolf, there's still usually a husk of the animal. Their bone, a bone or two might be missing. A couple of bones might be missing, but there's always something left. But this there is, is just like nothing. It's like the animal popped, and there's nothing left but the blood stain that, and the walls are, and the walls and the roof are splattered. Uh, in this, if you want to give me a tracking roll, either of you. I'm good at that. Me too. Awesome. So does that okay. mean we do two? Wonder Twin powers activate. <laughs> um, I tell First you... rolls of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get something in there. Uh, I tell you what we'll do. I... I'm going to make this uh, an average roll. So I'll be rolling 2d10. Um, which one of you is going to be tracking? Probably you. you. Yeah. Okay. So Diana, you you have the track skill. Yeah. You're gonna roll D10 plus that D10. You're a hunter. That's the third D10. And we're gonna say that because Dirch is helping. Okay. You can roll know. four. Oh, so four. You're gonna be rolling four, four D10. That's as nice as that will be all again. Four D10 against <laughs> my yeah. against my two. Okay. And you're beating yeah. an eleven. To beat it on, Amber. Quick math. Uh, okay, that's one, two, three, <laughs> seven. Are you freaking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> it's oh a blue sky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so upset by all that, you know, blood. Does spider. that blood smear look like a goose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All it's an optical. It's painted an optical illusion on the wall. I don't even mean it comes busy if you close one eye. <laughs> It's a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, those are some amazing rolls. Um, Oopsie, beautiful. Oh my goodness, Amber, get rid of those dice, Diana. It's all my dice. You come across some sc scratch marks on the ground. You like they look like prints. They are, they're larger. They're larger than any wolf would make, but they're smaller than a bear's print. And there's something odd with them. Where there's clearly this creature walks on all fours, but there's on its back legs, the claw marks, they don't look like any claw marks you've ever seen before. The prints don't look right. And you just you hear kind of a like uh, the spade crunch into the soil as um, Olaf literally lifts a chunk up and just chucks it over his shoulder because he started working, assuming he were kind of finished. And just where you started to see where you took notice of the prince, he has torn through the work, um, and you have now one point of mental anguish. So, uh, yep, yeah, I'm Almost like real life. A little bit like real life. Yeah, one uh, point. <laughs> uh, so you are frustrated by uh, that. I'm going to get you to roll uh, endure for me. Right. Now, endurance is one of my skills. So do I do an extra? Two. Uh, okay. Yeah. Versus me. And I rolled a seven. So you have to beat a seven. Not super confident, got to be honest. <laughs> uh, oh, 11. Okay. Yay. That's fine. Uh, you turn around and just start roaring. And Dirt, you see Diana lose it. She just starts screaming at Olaf, who has dug up patches of the barn, uh, destroying the tracks that she had found. Um, the man looks... Yeah, he, he looks like a whimpering puppy, like, as Diana, like, towers over him. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? 
he ruined everything. We had tracks and they're gone. This, this is, this is, how am I supposed to track it if I have no idea what's going on? I don't know what it is. And the one little bit of a clue I had has just been ruined. All right. Well, at least you saw it. So we can, you know, draw it, write it down, what it looked like and go from there. Don't panic. It's fine. Your cow is dead. <laughs> Everyone else's cows are dead. And my niece is missing. Nothing is fine. That was the horse. Are you sure you're a trucker? <laughs> <laughs> Dirch gets murdered in the barn. <laughs> Keep digging it Dirch well. also Keep puts digging. Fun and explodes. <laughs> um, Diana, resisting the urge to just throttle you, uh, Dirch, uh, storms yeah. out of the out of the stable, back down towards the. Well, am I coming with you or what? <laughs> Women. <laughs> well, no longer uh, squashing your to throttle him. <laughs> <laughs> Turns back. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you you're heading. You've learned a little bit, um, not as much as you'd like, but you've learned a little bit. Um, you head back uh, towards the village square and as you do it, it is later now uh, but we cut back to uh, about an hour or so ago um, when Mrs. Turner and Father Radomir uh, the dream team <laughs> moved, <laughs> moved themselves into the drowned duck and when Father when Mrs. Turner moves in uh, a few people just kind of shuffle like they make a space for Mrs. Turner to sit and then they see Father Radomir and everybody just goes quiet and just starts looking into their drink. Hello! Hi, everyone! Are we having a good evening? Oh, uh, <laughs> good evening, Father. Uh, Christina kind of gestures from behind the bar. Uh, she's pinned on a fairly uh, colourfully marked apron, uh, as I will put it. Uh, oh, you can read the menu on her apron. That's useful. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is that Genius. charming with Violet that we just love so much about you. Uh, so you have been tasked with dealing with the beast. Oh, if only they knew about you, Mrs. Turner, huh? that there'd be no beast. <laughs> You'd have nothing to deal with, there'd be no problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's funny, isn't she, Mrs. Turner? Oh, Christina, that's a lovely loud apron you've got there. Very we, nice. We do our best by young people and we hope we hope they'll stick to the paths. But some of them, some of them, they mm. just, you know, they wander astray. Mm, and we bring them back sharply, quickly. If we're lucky. Oh, look, Father. There's Stefan. He's the hunter. He's been out in the woods lately. Why don't you ask him if he's seen anything? Do you think he'll... Do you think he wants to talk to me? Have you met him yet? Because I think he's been out trapping. Not so it would be a good idea. Because he'd be another soul that you'd, you'd need to tend to. He's a bit terrifying, Mrs. Turner. Ah, no, he's grand. Do you think she likes Terri him? Terrifying. He's, sweating, he's pulling his collar a little bit. <laughs> terrifying. Oh, you should have no. seen him when he was teething as a baby. Oh, he had a pair of lungs on him. <laughs> oh, okay. He's grand. Tell him okay. I said he, he should talk to you. Okay, okay. Come on now. Come on now, Father. This is what your daddy wanted you to do. Let's go make some friends. And that's okay. Mrs. Turner, good luck. Off I go. Uh, Stefan, hello. Uh, do you have a moment there, please? Uh, Christina, a drink. A drink for Stefan. Whatever he's having. And one for me. <laughs> you stand awkwardly next to a man who's staring into a thick bowl of stew. Um, and he just kind of half turns his head and he looks at you and you catch... You look at Stefan. You look back at Mrs. Turner. Stefan... You, you're, you're now questioning how old Mrs. Turner actually is because <laughs> Stefan... If he was teething and she, so it, the math, he, maybe he's just been aged by, you know, horrific Life. living conditions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's, he's definitely on in years uh, and he kind of looks up at you and you see that his face is kind of, uh, there's kind of a, a kind of a sallowness to his skin, even now in the, in the dark of winter, uh, a white beard and just kind of, uh, a thinning uh, patch of hair on his head, kind of that may have once been brown, um, 
and he kind of just turns and he looks at you and he's and there's next to him on the bench just a bushel of very dead squirrels. Oh, 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 oh that's turned. You can sit yourself down there, so father. If oh, you wish. thanks. thanks and he Stephen. just shoves the squirrels onto the, the floor. Oh, oh, I'll just okay. I mean, just gonna wipe the oh, oh okay. Oh, I'll just sit here. And he just doesn't know what to say to this man. So, um, do you do you like mass? <laughs> I like math. I know Father Ravislav used to go on a little bit. I kind of hope I don't go on a little bit, do I? I think I hear you're doing that right now. Okay, now hmm. that drink, Christina. Liked... Is there a drink coming? Christina's busy in conversation. She kind of gives a. She's she just she gestures, but she's chatting away to Mrs. Turner. Oh God, my hands are very sweaty. Are your hands sweaty? Um. <laughs> so, um. This beast, I mean, we, do we think it's really a beast? I think it could be a test from, you know. <laughs> so we're just trying to figure out what is going on. The Baron asked me and I'm trying <laughs> to make a good impression. The, ba- the Baron so asked you. The Baron asked, asked you. He asked me. So that's good, isn't it? He asked me. Isn't that and good? he puts this, he kind of just puts the spoon down. He turns to kind of look at you and there's just a a snot of gravy kind of in his beard. Uh, oh. And when he talks, he spits a chunk of carrot at you. Um, <laughs> oh, Stefan. You... With, all the, with all the respect, mm. Father, you're mm. Uh, mm. you're mm. pissing yourself having a conversation with me. I... Mm. Oh, Christ. <sighs> There's a fat lot that fella's going to do for you. <sighs> If you do come face to face with it. Mm. God, oh God. And he's going to just like scooch back a little bit on the bench away from Stefan. You slide across the bench as you scooch back and you just feel the wet of the squirrel's blood soak into your pants. Mm. And robes. Your dress robes. Oh, it's too late to move now. <laughs> um, so you're a hunter. You hunt things, kill them, presumably. Thou shalt nah, not and all that, alive. but we allow they're it alive. in some cases. Oh, they're alive. Okay. Um, so any any ideas what uh we might have ahead of us, what we might be encountering, and perhaps how we might stop this beast? I think we could maybe try and talk to it, but I don't know if the others would approve. And he kind of he sits in. I tell you what, father. You go and talk to it. Mm-hmm. Because I know where it lives. <gasps> you do not, do you? Are you going to tell me? I am only in the fucking hopes that we get a new one of you. <laughs> one of who? <laughs> a replacement. For who? Well, the last fellow wasn't such a talkative prick. Does anybody like me? No. <laughs> And the bar just goes quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think <clears throat> he'll scoot a little bit closer and cover his mouth and his nose? <laughs> Do you think they'll like me if I stop the beast? I know himself will be happy, but do you think everyone else will be happy? Do you think they'll like me? Oh, Father. They'll say nice things as they're putting what's left of you in the ground. <laughs> I'm sure of that. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. Um, so you said you know where it lives somewhere nice I hope <laughs> I tell you what I tell you what I'll tell you where to find it because I tracked it <gasps> go on if I'll put in get, a good word for you if you get Diana to admit that I'm the better hunter than she is <laughs> worries i'm great talking to women so i am they all like me here in mm. front of everybody okay once and for all okay you know pride's a sin son so has being a stupid prick now fuck off <laughs> oh my god they never told me about this <laughs> that's it they didn't tell you about that sin was it <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Thanks now. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, Christina, he doesn't need the drink anymore. Uh, maybe Mrs. Turner will have that. Thanks now. <laughs> See you later. As... Mrs. Turner. Mrs. Turner. <laughs> Mrs. Turner. Um, Violet, uh, Christina has handed you a, uh, a mason jar. Uh, <laughs> so cool. Very yeah. cool. You see, yeah, but they're very in. They're they're very late late eighteenth century. They start to come about. Um, the it's filled, it's filled uh, with vinegar, um, and chunks of vegetables. Well, try it. You won't guess what I've put in it this year. She picks it up, holds it, look through us the firelight. Gives it a stir, sniffs it. Um, given there's vegetables and stuff in it, mm. and there's probably anything that's locally foraged, I'd say that given her profession, Mrs. Turner would have some notion of herbs. Herbs. So I want to try and make a roll to guess what it is, without tasting it. <laughs> sniffing it. I... You can, if you, if you, if you, you mentioned already that you, the two of you seem to have been in a competition, so I'll let you roll uh, 2d10, only because you and Christina apparently have a food competition going on between the pair of you, but she's going to roll 1d10, and she got a 1, so it just have to be 1. Look, look, it, you say it for a little right, for me, I say something to do, because otherwise she'd be bored, and it's a way of up in your game. 13. Okay. You you swirl the jar around and she's you can feel Christina's eyes boring into you as you're judging it and you're holding it up to the light just to try and see what kind of colours are catching in it and there's definitely a lump of potato in it. Uh, you, you can see shreds the cabbage. And as you open it and you take kind of a whiff, you, oh, de- yeah, you can definitely... There's, it's definitely pickled it's, or pickling. You, you get the sharp, acidic... Uh, and it's kind of a sweet afterbite of the vinegar up your nose. But there is something else. And first, you think it's smoke. It smells a little bit like tobacco, like pipe smoke. But as the swirling liquid kind of comes to a stop and everything starts to settle in the jar, you just see swirling around the top of it, slowing down. Just a thick little strand of something. Kind of slimy. Spit. I'll have a sip. I think I'll pass. Sure, it reminds me of... um... Poor Mrs. Hackett, when she used to bake bread. And she used to do really well with it, except there was hay fever season. Uh, Christina takes the the jar off you. Well, if you can't handle, you know, the heat in the kitchen, and she just takes a huge mouthful. uh, So I'll top it up later. It'll be fine. (sighs) So, Violet, you have uh, found yourself uh, in charge of something else. My, you... Very busy around the village these days. How did you look? I helped bring some so many of them into the world. I just I hate to see the place dwindle, and I hate to see people grieving. It's one of the hardest parts of any of this is seeing people grieving from a, a babe that didn't happen to a babe that didn't live very long. The ones that get taken by the pox, the ones that get taken by the flu, and then you've got the old, the more elderly people. The flu takes the same time. It's winter, and winter's a hard enough time. Without things coming around aching people. It's a tough enough place it is. So, Enrique and Anya, I know her mother didn't approve. And I know they weren't meant to be doing a line. Well, she, she leans in. Her mother is, a, well, you, you know that family, the Maraviches, the sister, and Diana. She's that one is 
Yeah, I know, but that's why I think the mother kept her so close. She was worried, like, she'd take after the aunt. She'd get notions. Well, if... Look, I don't mean... Violet, you know me. I'm not a gossip. I don't tell people other people's stories. But this is what I heard. Eric actually proposed. He proposed to the girl. Or he was about to. They were a meeting. They... You know... You know... you. Well, you know the grotto. You know where they all, all the, the young ones go. And... Half, half the babes in this place wouldn't happen except for walks in the wood. Ah, oh. sure. What are you and... really got born there? And uh, Christina kind of just like rolls her hips a little bit and then rolls out her back. Well, we've all taken a stroll by moonlight, haven't we? Yeah, but not usually this time of year. In fairness, the cold gets in your bones some fears. Well, young people, you know themselves, they get all these urges now these days and all this forward thinking and oh. Oh. and the new priest is not exactly helping situation with his liberal ideas. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's the liberal ideas. I, I think it's more the... You have to look after the earthly stuff in the body as well as looking after the soul. And if you're too... Up there, early fairly thinking about how many eyes an angel has. <laughs> You're not paying much attention to what's happening down here. Oh, he, oh, that don't even get me started. He was telling me all about how that they don't even look like what's in the Bible. It's, it's very well, strange. Well, it's in fairness, the first thing they say is, "Don't be scared." So I, I don't think they're asked. They're all that good looking. In fairness. Well, that's actually funny. That's the same thing that Father Radomir said to me when he first came in. He said, "Don't be scared. I'm the new priest," and I was. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, are you saying he's an angel in disguise? <laughs> oh, I'm saying he's something in disguise, but it's probably not an angel, Violet. And she just starts, oh yes, I'll get you your drink. Yeah, yeah. He, he but it wouldn't be well. unknown for Cork and couples to head off. And if Anya had promised herself to him, doing it one overnight in the woods, you get away with it, even with your mother. But more than that, do so you think they might have headed up in and around the grotto? Look, that's I, I overheard Eric talking to his father. He had taken his their grandmother's ring. It was being passed on. The, the girl was to be betrothed. It's a and, shame. It's a shame. Ah, oh, well, you know, that that'll place will take a fire and hold some heat. So it wasn't being completely unsensible. Well, you have to wonder, really. None of this really makes a whole lot of sense, Violet, anymore. And, now they're saying that maybe even Elspeth is involved somehow, that she maybe even conjured this thing. <laughs> Listen, I have a fair bit of times for Elspeth, as you do know. But could she actually shift warts off people? I wouldn't be dealing with the number of borns idiots who go and get a nail from the blacksmith and try to burn them off themselves. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's just some people were talking earlier some of the merchants were saying that they've seen her in the woods late at night yeah because she likes the weird mushrooms oh she put gave me some of those to put in the tea uh, well <laughs> if, if you put them in the cupboard and open it a crack if they seem to give off a bit of light i'd be careful with them and tea you know any mushroom is edible once <laughs> Very good, very good. Uh, you are very wise, Violet. Uh, Look, if anybody starts talking about Elspeth and how me, she may be involved with it, do you know what? If Elspeth isn't living around here, they'd be saying it's about me. Well, I, Violet, and if I, I wasn't, and if I wasn't around here, they'd be saying, "Sure, it's probably that uppity wagon that runs that place. It's not natural for women to be running inns, you know." God knows what she's at. So, in fairness, you know. You make a good point. Uh, 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 all the same, Violet look, does. Look, I have a question for you. What's the most people you've ever had in here at once? Oh, seven. We were packed. Even with the loft? Who told you about the loft? Course. You put nettles in there sometimes with the hay and just some people might take a roll and ended up with Martin the bargain for. We have on occasion extended our capacity. Uh, we, we we could fit. That, that's okay. I, I, 
have no problem with that. The reason I'm asking is things turn for the bad. We may need to get the safest safest way is to get as many people in safe together. Safety in numbers. You've got stout, strong walls and you're well able to, to feed plenty. And if we have to, particularly the people who live further out, bring them in to keep them safe. And, you know, there's no one else here I trust to be able to do that except yourself. Oh, Mrs. Turner, I, I did not realise that you thought so highly of me. I, I will. Yes, I, 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 I have some. Like of your men. bankers need work, but you're not a bad sort. <laughs> I'll ask some of the men to spread the word if they, if any of the outlying households wish to come in and be safe, and we can, we can take a few families in of. Of course. Uh, oh, F Father Radimir, I was just telling Violet I've uh, I've actually volunteered the the drowned duck um, as a place of refuge for anybody who may be uncomfortable or frightened uh, to stay in their own household. He's I know the church. The I know the church gets used, Father, but you know it's not exactly as comfortable as here, and sure we might need both of them in a pinch. He's not listening. He's talking to someone beside him in the bar going, and then God came down as a bush that was on fire and said to Moses, come on now, you just get them all out of Egypt. Could you imagine that? Sorry, Mrs. Turner, what is that? The bush was on fire. That's true. There are lots of strange things happen in the Bible. We all know the Bible's absolutely true. Sure, you know, yeah, and if there are weird angels and there were weird bushes, God oh. knows what else God made when he had took a notion. And we're um, coming here now with the beast, are we? Is the beast coming here? No, but anybody from the outlying villages that need to come in for the well, safety of the town. I know been very where lucky. the beast is. I know where he is. Well, nearly. nearly. Do you know? Nearly, yeah. Nearly. We just need to get Diana in here. Do you know where she is? <laughs> She'll be on her way in a minute. So Stefan yeah. was able to help. Stefan's a queer sort now. You've got Stefan on your side, though. I you get half the town. Me. I think he likes me now. There'll be squirrels on your doorstep in your future. Well, maybe not. Do you think he prepares them beforehand? I don't want to touch that. And on that, the door opens to the drowned duck and a still agitated Diana uh, storms in with dirt, kind of oh, no. chasing her tail. He'll grab another sherry. Approach Diana. He's feeling a bit... He's, he's feeling good now in himself. He's got a bit of courage. Diana, there you are. Come here now. Father, come here. Have a drink for you. There you go. Have that now. Now, and he's gonna put an arm around her. I, I, I am imagining in my head that he is much shorter than her. Yeah. <laughs> now, Diana, uh, I, I kind of, I found out where our beast is. Nearly. Okay. Nearly. Do you want to know where it is? Of course. You've just got to do one thing. This really like, isn't a time. Have for... a little drink. Have your drink there, and I'll tell you. So, um, you know, Stefan. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm not too sure how I feel about him. I don't. Mrs. Turner said he likes me. I don't think he likes me. But he said he knows where the beast is. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. That's and good, he isn't it? Told you where it was. He will tell me after you do something. And it's very simple, really. And God well, will only love you for it. Will I tell you what it is? Yes. What? What is it? You just have to get up there on the bar you're well able and just announce to everyone that he's a better hunter than you <clears throat> it's only i mean god will forgive white lies so <laughs> you can just say that and i'll have a word and we'll be fine i throw his arm off of me <laughs> and very loudly look stefan dead in the eye and say i would rather eat my horse shit covered boots Di Diana, no 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 everyone i've heard you already you have your fucking no. <laughs> listen here stefan <laughs> it's okay i'm just talking okay everyone now everyone calm calm diana come over here and she's gonna he's gonna just kind of try and take her away what i'll tell i'll tell you something okay we'll do a deal right I shouldn't be saying this. I shouldn't be saying this. I shouldn't even be thinking it. Spit it out, Father. If you do what I asked you to do, 
Sunday coming. Stefan will have something extra put in his wine. It'll knock him out, so we'll, we'll get it from Christina. He'll be on the pot for a while. Be a bit. But only if you get up there and do that. And she's, Lord forgive me, Lord forgive me, I'll do it for the town. And so everyone likes me. <laughs> Can I roll charm? <laughs> you may roll charm. You are the priest. I guess the two of you can. Against, I assume. I mean, I don't know. I don't think the system allows for contesting rolls. Oh, well, oh no, they're now. both you guys. Oh God, God doesn't want me to roll it. It's on the floor. Look, we we broke the last round. How it one shot. So why not break this one as well? I got Apologies. a twelve. I got a twelve. Apologies to Grant Howard and Chris Taylor. Um, if you're watching this at any stage. Um, so Diana, if you want to make an opposing, I'm. Are, 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 are you going along with it? No, I I would definitely oppose. Um, okay. <laughs> this plan okay so so how many did you roll i rolled two, two. charm two. plus the priest so i'm assuming i would roll one yeah and if there's anything you think you might be able to do differently shut up amber don't even think because <laughs> <laughs> if you're just do rolling one you're not going to be a 12. <clears throat> right um is there any way to like you know apply my shoot skill and just you know <laughs> shoot the priest <laughs> No, because you're contesting okay. a persuasion check. You can't, <laughs> can't shoot your way out of everything. <laughs> this is where you're wrong. <laughs> Mrs. Turner finds her funny in a very <clears throat> sherry a moment with Christina watching this. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, Christina. <laughs> Lovely, actually. I was listening to your conversation, so you start talking about liaisons in the wood, and then I just step back. Am I am I enduring this bullshit? Can that, <laughs> does that count? Uh, is it? Do you find it humiliating? Are you enduring the humiliation? <laughs> to be fair, wait. How much did you get? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. I'm gonna give them the shits in front of everyone. Is that not good? I would like to contest with two if I've convinced you, but if not, then I guess I just lose. I which is fair <laughs> would say threat more than that you can threaten oh. people right you've got oh that no. oh, you only I do <laughs> so if you want to have my back here see you <laughs> <laughs> you can take your god you because can we've, we've definitely become friends in these last couple yeah, hours no. right? uh, I love the longest discussion in this game is how to just fuck over the priest <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Mrs. Mrs. Turner will lean the further to Diana and say I know it hurts, love. But what's more important, your runner or saving your niece? Oh, I should have gone with that shite. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I think with Mrs. Turner chiming in there, yeah, Yeah, I think, Diana, you've no choice. (sighs) Go on, up you go. Oh, boy. Do I have to stand on the bar? Yeah, that's what he said. In, well, he said in the bar, but I think on the bar would be best. Coyote ugly, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I take a very deep breath. Everybody, stop. Everybody, stop. stop. She's something to say. Stop. Stop. Stefan. Why? Just make sure they're all listening. Why? <gasps> Off you go. <laughs> go on. Take a very deep breath. I hoist myself up on the bar and I don't make eye contact with any of them. I look above everybody's head, straight, straight at a wall, out the window, whatever's in front of me. What's Stefan's last name? Bronner. Well, okay, I can't say that. I say. <laughs> Hi, Diana. I'm not as good a hunter as Stefan, but just barely, barely. He's 
a little bit better than me. <laughs> Stefan stands up and actually takes a bow and is clapping at the same time. Uh, <laughs> can I shoot him now? <laughs> it takes a brave woman to say that she's not the best at something, but you know what? That just means you've got room to improve. And, and your, I mean, your drive and determination, I'm sure you'll get there. And like, you're never better than a man at the same job. So don't be worried about it. That's just the way of things. We had a deal then, Father. Oh, we did. Go on now. Seeing as how I was able to actually track this thing, you want to make your way northwest into the woods. Past northwest. The Past Which way is that now? Wait, wait, hold on now. Which way is that? And he points. <clears throat> northwest, I <Northwesterly>. assume. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I could get us to the grotto, and Deanna would be able to get us further than that. And after the grotto, you keep going straight. Straight. And Did you, you get follow... that? Mm. Yes, got it. The blood. Follow the blood. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Mm. Lovely. That was your tracking. That was your incredible master tracking. Was just a trail of blood. Anybody could have seen that. Now. Did Did you spot it? Diana, did you? Have you okay, now let's everyone that go. Way. No, I, Diana, in, so... in, in, in fairness, Stefan, that she's a lovely, respectable young woman, is Diana. She wouldn't be hanging out around the grotto unlike other near dwells who, at their age, should know better. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dirk tucks a uh, hair behind us. Yeah, so does, so does, so does Christina. Especially this time of year, you cut your debt. Um, I'll have a lovely wine for you on Sunday, Stefan, all right? When you get to the edge of the woods, you know the hills. Mm. The hill, the big, yeah, the hill. Yeah, those are hills, Father. Mm-hmm. Right there, next to the widow's boulder, there's a cave. Oh. Can't miss it. Jesus came out of the cave after three days, wasn't that great? <laughs> oh. Do you think Jesus will be in there? Jesus had shit himself at the sight of this <laughs> <laughs> so uh best to see your clear father in fairness a big meal and stuck in the one place for three days afterwards he probably <laughs> did <laughs> yeah. right so let's go to the cave Stefan thank you very much no, what, what, time, what time of the evening is it because it gets dark very early do you really want to be tramping around the woods Pitch I'm dark game. outside now. Ah, oh, go on, it's a wee bit of fun. I am not that very into the woods. Okay, then tomorrow it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can the somebody man... walk me back to my farm? <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I want to move on, father. <laughs> <laughs> you. A few more people kind of arrive into the tavern um, and sit themselves down. And some of the men had already left kind of to let some of the... Uh, most people still don't think there's anything more than just a very hungry wolf or a bear that woke up from its hibernation early that uh, is now looking to feed and is being quite vicious in that process. And as the night, or as the evening drifts on and becomes night, you all kind of find yourselves beginning to kind of get weary, tiredness kind of setting in. And just as Christina is about to kind of call last orders and shift everybody home for the night, the door swings open and you see Elspeth standing there, soaked to the bone and her hands covered in blood. Oh, mercy, Elspeth, what happened? I... Violet, I... And she's, she just starts smiling. I have... I have found the lovers. <laughs> oh, no. And she just starts to kind of, like, dance and, like, spin on the spot. And then she runs out into the rain. I'm going to lean over to Diana and go. Yeah, I'm already going. I, I chase, I chase after. Oh, is anyone here? <laughs> <laughs> no, they terrible. just left the priest just sitting there on his own. 
If the, he doesn't have the wit to follow them. Is that is she on her period? Is that what that is? Oh Jesus. Um on that <laughs> note. On that... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> On that note, I believe a very confused man uh, sitting in a tavern. We are going to take a break uh, for a couple of minutes. Uh, so while Father Radimir goes and reads a textbook, um, <laughs> everybody Radimir else, I would suggest go grab yourself a drink, um, get up for a stretch, uh, everybody else, I hydrate, read, go take grab a breather. Drink, um, 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 and uh, now would be a perfect time to actually go and um, give and Octacon a follow a on Twitter. I think you've got a lovely 10 mm-hmm. minutes to do so. Uh, yeah. We'll drop those details there into chat. Um, and uh, we'll see you all in a couple of minutes. All right. Yay.
and we're back. Hopefully you've had a chance to... I'm so sorry. This was meant to be a horror. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's I'm terrifying. terrifying. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> um, uh, you're very, very welcome back to uh, One Shot Night's End. Uh, and if you are just joining us, uh, we are playing Grant Hout and Chris Taylor's The Beast. And I use the word playing liberally, uh, very liberally. Uh, <laughs> and I am joined by some regular faces. Yeah, you might recognize Amber, Fiona and Eilish from some of our other D8 streams and shows. And special guest uh, Janet from Octagon. And uh, we're, we're, we're learning as we go uh, and trying to figure things out uh, with uh, the beast that is attacking the village of Visiva. And uh, when we left off at the break, the the four people who'd been put in charge of it, Father, um, I am actually going to say Ramadir, uh, Father <laughs> Radomir, <laughs> Mrs. Violet Turner, the midwife, uh, Dirch, the only survivor, and Diana, the hunter in the village, have been effectively strong-armed into taking responsibility for dealing with the creature, having accosted the Baron at a town hall meeting. The four were levied with the responsibility of dealing with the creature once and for all, uncovering what it is and getting rid of it uh, all within three days. We left at the end of the first night uh, with the group having learned where the beast makes its lair. You're as welcome. What it is, as to what it is or how to stop it, we're getting there. We're learning. <laughs> we're, we're... <laughs> if you just throw bodies at it at this stage, it might just explode from overeating. Uh, but uh, we're getting there with it. Um, or it might choke on the priest. You never know. It might choke on the priest. No, he's a spindly. He's spindly. The bones oh, are all exactly. Okay. He gets stuck in his craw. <laughs> <Cry. laughs> um, when we left off the the inhabitants of the Drowned Duck, the locals who had hunkered down for the night with a uh, warm drink, uh, had their conversation and parting words interrupted as Elizabeth, the local witch, uh, flung herself into the tavern, singing, dancing and laughing, her hands covered in blood, her clothes soaked uh, and stuck to her skin as she's drowned by the rain, decrying she's she's found the lovers before running out into the rain. Our group have made pursuit and Violet and Diana kind of charging after her. You catch Elspeth just as she makes her way to the edge of the village through a small kind of off road, a clearing between a, a park of trees uh, and the edge of the main woods, uh, a small pedestrian path like it just it's a shortcut uh for for anybody that's on foot um she's kind of caught halfway between uh the, the village and the hut or the shack that elizabeth lives in and that viola that you would call on uh from time to time to check to see how she is uh stopping and turning her face her eyes her pupils are like saucers mad elvis Precisely. Some mushrooms you can eat twice, but it's still not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> I take Elspeth by the arm, under uh, mine, and say, "Right, love, cup of tea. Let's get a cup of tea. Looks like you could do with a cup of tea. Have you any honey?" And then I'm gonna talk with her and walk her back to the house. I sure uh, we can do without honey, but you know, some rose hips would be good. Maybe a bit of chamomile. <laughs> Oh, Va Violet, I didn't... Why are you standing inside my house? We're not quite there yet. Do you want valerian? I know that can be a bit odd this time of year. And the smell's not great, which is why you need the honey anyway. And keep her talking and scooch her to the house. She, she's not resisting or, or struggling uh, at all. Uh, sorry, there's a, a comment from chat. Uh, oh my, this isn't one shot the game. This is D&D &D one shots. Uh <laughs> Pleasantly surprised, I hope. Uh, it is a one-shot, but it's not one-shot the game, and it's not D&D &D either. This is a 
uh, a one-page RPG created by Grant Howard. It's entitled The Beast. Uh, but thank you for joining us. I hope you stick around, um, uh, Skies, and thanks so much. Uh, as you approach the shack, uh, the group of you, uh, Janet, you, or Violet, rather, sorry, leading uh, Elizabeth to, uh, to it, you see the, the front door is wide open. I... Um spin Elspeth a bit because I've the grip in the arm and I nod to Diana to get her to kind of go ahead and have a look. I slip on past him. And... Uh, 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 I, 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 if I had known, if I had known that Her Majesty and she kind of half curtsies at you, Diana, uh, was coming to, I, I, I would have made the place is destroyed. The place is utterly... It, the, there's one cupboard that's lying face down. There's smashed delf. Uh, there's just chunks of food flung all over the place. The, everything. Uh, there's just an oozing cauldron of smoke uh, and some like very very charred looking ooze, kind of half crusted over the 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 lip of the pot. And an acrid smell just kind of emanating from it. Elspeth, you weren't trying to summon demons again. It's the wrong time of year for that. <laughs> oh, Violet, you, you are always, you are always, you are always so joking. Um, and I... it's the wrong time of year to be summoning satyrs as well. It's midsummer for that. No, no, no. I know you get a bit lonely this winter, but still. I, 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 I. And she kind of she looks at her hands and she just starts screaming. I th- I, I I find a bucket and upturn it and sit around it. Uh, she now kind of starts to rock back and forth a little bit, like she's and she's just staring at her hands. And Violet will go down into a deep squat, which is well used to sitting in for as long as needed, and will let um. Amber and Dirk um, investigate. Can I tell, does it look like she did this or does it look like somebody was in there? It would have taken some strength to shove the cupboard over. Okay. Um, have you have you got the investigate? No, but can I track her movements? Oh. <laughs> Screw it, we've ruined the system as it is. <laughs> I've got to investigate. Was I invited along? <laughs> I, I mean, you're here. here anyway. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello, Elspeth. You're not invited, but you're here. <laughs> but, but if anything pursued Elspeth back from the woods and came and trashed the house and then left again. You're gonna, so you're going to try and track tracks. Those, those prints that you're looking for. Yeah, if you want to give me that uh, tracking. I'll take the you. perimeter yeah. and have a look and see okay. if there's anything outside. And I think maybe Father Ramsden will be like, oh, a real witch's cottage. I get to go and have a look. <laughs> oh, what's in here? Demons and things. I don't really like them, but sure, we'll have a look. Go on. Let's have a look. Okay. Um, I get three then. Yes, you would do. Yeah. Um, you're beating a ten. Oh. Come on, Amber. Yes. Uh, much more. Quick math. Uh <laughs> It's very slow, man. 21. <laughs> oh, very okay. nice. Um, okay, we'll come to yes! that one in a second. And then, uh, Radimir, you're investigating. Looking for unholy stuff. Okay, <laughs> I'll, it'll be 2d10 as well, because you're specifically looking for, like, weird things. Anti-religious okay. weird things. <laughs> Creepy things. 11. There's... I, I'll, I'll deal with uh, Radimir first, because it's the most... Um, immediate um, but Diana you kind of shuffle past him uh, as the priest kind of steps in and yeah, you you kind of head outside Dirch what are you what are you doing um, he is absolutely terrified of Elspeth so he's just kind of hovering by the door and okay. like looking looking over his shoulder to make sure they're not being ambushed from behind or something. Dirch, oh. Dirch you... could you get a, a rag and some water uh, the, I the don't picture. want to go in there. No. no, no, no. Look, the pitcher's just there. It was kicked out. Grab the pitcher. Is it broken? If it's not, go get some water. 
uh yeah okay that's outside the house i will stay outside <laughs> oh bless him um so dark sure there's a water barrel around the back I can't coincidentally you're, like you're able to follow away. diana as she's tracking but you are <laughs> and you're kind of grateful for the fact that you're not on your own as you go around the house to to look for water to fetch um father uh radimir you it's now it's very difficult for you to ascertain what's demonic and not demonic at this stage there's so much of it everything in this place looks there's you've found you found a, a weird wicker semicircle, but there's a mouse's head sort of sewn into the front of it and there's dried flowers kind of coming out of it uh there's loads of drawings with random symbols on it that you don't necessarily understand like all they're they're just sitting under a rather large black and blue stone two things strike you as odd as you search the witch's house and it's not the fact that she's got loads of weird things that she might use in rituals pagans they do things apparently according to the church uh there's all this destruction around the place and it would have taken a hef like looking at Elsbeth, you don't think she'd had the strength to pull the cupboard down okay second thing you notice despite all the chaos and the crashing and the, the mess the table is set untouched and there are two chairs two plates, two cups, and two sets of utensils. Um, how, um, Miss Elspeth, how is she now? Is she okay? Uh, uh Violet, hello. Is, is she all right? She's had quite a shock and mushrooms haven't helped. Um, Unfortunately, there's no goat. There was a goat that milk could help, but well, we'll do what we can. I think we're going to have to have a word with her next week, some stage about all of. And we'll just kind of gesture to like the severed mouse head and all the. Mm. Look, in fairness, what? you've got some weird things in the church. Like I'm a Catholic <laughs> in church girl myself, but if I didn't know, and somebody said to me, "Should they get together every Sunday and eat bits of their god?" Isn't it great? It's a bit, it is a bit weird. But we know. do it in a nice way. It's all very, very proper. Not well, like. Yeah, I know. But See, now. Everybody has their own ways. No. But anyway, um, see now the cupboard. There's no way that woman pulled that down. No way. I, 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 I didn't. Eric did. Eric. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the lad that went off to the grotto, isn't he? You said you found them. I'll are they, the both, are they both alive? Uh, uh, <laughs> they... They're right there. And she points at the, the table and chairs. Is that were you what? were you expecting company? Uh, I had a I I thought I might be able to help maybe deal with Oh, I... were you going to marry them in the old ways on the quiet? That's my job. When, when I was a, a little girl, my, my grandmother told me, and she just, she's just looking at her hands and she just starts to trace just like a little circle. She told me a little story about a bear whose belly was as big as the mountain and she makes just a little triangle and this bear he woke up very hungry so he ate all the deer but he still wasn't satisfied <sighs> hungry bear then he ate 
all of the birds in the sky. And he grew wings. <laughs> but he was still hungry. Despair. So then he ate all the mushrooms. Naughty bear. Those are Elspeth's mushrooms. <laughs> then he ate all the grass. And the trees. And the rocks. Fat little bear. Was still hungry. And a witch came by. And she tried the bear to eat her. And she lunges at you, uh, Father Radomir. He will, he will jump back. <laughs> but the witch, she was very clever. All witches are very clever. And Violet, you know this. You know, you know I'm very clever. Oh, absolutely. Shush. Shush, Eric. I'm telling them. I'm telling them the story. I'm telling them the story. Eric, typical man, always wants to get his opinion into places. Not just his opinion, unfortunately. <gasps> no, no, no. Miss Anya was a very wholesome young lady. Oh, no, not her. She could she could be the making of him if he settles down with her. Did you say it was? What you and mean it was? And the table flips violently. <gasps> the witch. You've upset on you. The witch, she tricked the bear. She told him he was, she wasn't big enough. She wasn't fat enough for him to eat right now. He would still be hungry, but he should go to sleep. And when he wakes up, she will be in a big pot, cooking and boiling, <laughs> boiling, eating. And she would be ready for him to eat and he would have a perfect dinner. So the care, he waddled back to his little lair. And he fell asleep. And the witch, she cursed him. And she buried him deep in the mountain. <laughs> and do you know who that witch was? Your grandmother? My great-grandmother. So he's been asleep a long time. The bear is hungry. How do we put him back asleep? Oh. The bear has learned a lesson. Elspeth tried. Look, I tried. She holds out her hands and her hands are covered in blood. No, no, no. The bear won't fall for tricks. You have to stop him, Violet. You have to stop him. The bad bear. He likes mushrooms. Could we feed him some of the the more dangerous mushrooms? No, no, no. No? This this bear now, he he thinks long time sleeping. He thinks long time. The bear doesn't want to be a bear anymore. No, 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 no. Why be a bear? When you can be a man. Ah. So now, he eats all the people. And the kitchen starts to, the, the, the shack oh, starts to shake. Oh, fuck this. Father Radomir's gonna whip out his crucifix and with a shaking hand he's going to approach the table and just going to be talking to himself I wonder if I can get read above you somewhere give me an injure roll <laughs> oh, that'll just be one for me uh, four okay fourteen for me uh, your arm as you're holding out the you pull the crucifix up you you brandish it at the table and immediately your hand, something it feels like something grabs your wrist and just yanks. And your entire shoulder just, it just looks like it actually, there's a pop. He's just silent, like the pain is too much. He's silent, he's on the floor. 
shaking. What's going on here? What's going on in here? I'll get you in a minute, Father. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I heard the pop. It'll go back in. Just, just, just hang on. Elspeth. What is that? So, what type of a man does he look like? My fucking arm. <laughs> say three our fathers and offer it up to St. Anthony be grand. <laughs> Oh, Elspeth, what type of a man does he look like? He, he doesn't look like a man yet. Okay. Oh, he is wonderful. Right. And she collapses. Oh. Maybe he wants to be a woman too. He seems to be eating women. Look, we're not safe either. <laughs> All right, Father. Um, Violet will go look around, find um, a wooden spoon, go over and says, here, bite in that. And no, no, stay on the ground. And she'll put one foot on his hip, get the arm, lock the elbow, and pop at the shoulder. Oh, again. Okay. Roll for a heel. Yep. So healing and she's set quite a few of these injuries over the time okay well, people you who've hit... been p plowing and the horse got spooked and <laughs> okay so you roll your normal d10 you add your heel and you can add your <clears throat> dislocating experience uh, <laughs> relocating experience popping and locking yeah pop, yeah, <laughs> pop and locking mommy told me the priest um... would be easy <laughs> okay there's a tree and an eight is eleven and a ten okay. so 21. Okay, well, you, you beat my 16. Uh, oh, my fuck. <laughs> <laughs> with a short, sharp shock to the system, Father uh, Radimir, your arm is just popped straight back in. <gasps> what the fuck? Is and standing in front of two of you, still at the chairs, you see the spectral forms <gasps> of Anna and Eric. I'll take the priest's stole from around his neck and use it to put a sling. Oh. They... Ignoring the ghosts. <laughs> well, at least now it's doing something useful. <laughs> you... As you... As they kind of form, uh, it's, a, it's like a spectral sort of wisp of light that they are. Violet would have known them and she's having a good pair to see. Is that that's really them? All you recognize of Eric are his eyes because from the bridge of his nose down, it's just missing. Mm. <gasps> there's the, the, there's a flap of skin where his neck was and a tangled mess of a shoulder and some of his insides dangling out. Uh, oh, look! That's what the breathing tube looks like. That's interesting. <laughs> Father's going to take out his little pocket Bible and just be smoking through where does it say anything about this <laughs> my sister now, what's that check the glossary at the back uh, <laughs> Go. it looked Missing like faces. it looks like it's at them only body not body and soul so there's a good chance they'll be able to pass on how do, we, how do they go go on now go on he's waiting for you up there up you go <laughs> up you well, go maybe, go on maybe they've unfinished business they Anna opens her mouth <gasps> and ah, a Anna girl. wailing shriek oh. just erupts. Ah, Anna, we'd have danced at your wedding. Both of you give me injure rolls. Ah, feck off now. The other two out having a great time getting water and looking at <laughs> things on the ground. Um, things probably out here waiting to eat me, like. There's another four for Father Mrs. Radley. Mrs. Mrs. Okay, it's a ghost. And she's heard things and seen things her time, but she hasn't seen a ghost. But she's used to women looking at her and screaming and looking <laughs> happy. I am okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, fair enough. You can, you can we'll say she's a tempered soul. Um, okay. You were trying to beat a 13. I'm just getting battered in here. 12. It is oh. a 4. Um, both of you are 
as Anna screams, everything in the room starts to kind of lift and whip up around uh, the the debris, the broken uh, shards of uh, crockery, flowers, the food, the smoke and dust, all of it's just whipped around in a frenzy and it's just blasted around. You're cut and hit in a couple of places, but it's not, it's not those that bothers you. There's a chilling, there's a chillingness that settles deep in your bones, deep in inside. And you feel yourselves overcome by a terrifying sadness. And you both just start to wail, crying. Outside, Diana, you 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 kind of you're looking at the ground again, looking for that those same tracks. You're looking for anything to allude to the the creature's whereabouts uh, or anything. Mm -hmm. When you hear something come up behind you, and just standing there, frightened, looking is Dirch, uh, holding a bucket. Well, I need to get water for the witch. I don't know where they said there was a barrel. There is. There's. There's water just around the back of the hut. Just what are you doing out here? There. Looking for tracks for the beast for for something to tell us what happened to, to Elspeth. Uh, she's always crazy. I don't know what to tell you. This is far beyond anything I've seen from her previously. I mean. Maybe she took something in the woods. You know those witches. Sure, but we're also aware that there is a beast on the loose and she is covered in blood, so we should probably cover all bases. Do you think she did it? No. No, I, I know her well enough. This this wasn't her. This is something... This is I something much more unnatural. Witches are pretty unnatural. Ah, uh, they're more natural than you'd think. A cold shiver runs up your spine, Diana. And at that moment, you hear a crashing sound coming from inside, and you just hear Father Radimir shouting. Uh, Mrs. Vi uh, Mrs. Turner telling him to kind of calm down a little bit, but uh, and Elspeth kind of laughing to herself. Are there like windows around the hut? Can I peek in? Or there is. Uh, you, you see, Radimir is kind of staring at a table that's upside down now. Um, Elspeth is kind of pointing at him, uh, and uh, Mrs. Radimir is trying. She seems to be Mrs. Sister. Radimir. <laughs> Mrs. Radimir. Oh, Mrs. Turner. oh! <laughs> the scandal of the parish. <laughs> Very quickly, <laughs> um, Mrs. Turner seems to be trying to coax something out of uh, Elspeth, who's kind of half looking at Radimir, but also half telling a story or doing something with her hand. <clears throat> and that cold shiver that it just permeates throughout and you actually feel a sweat uh, on the nape of your neck down your back and you realize that it's not coming from the sound inside are you okay you look like you've seen a ghost there's something there's something at the edge of the woods standing there silhouetted Haunched like a wolf. Dirch. But, but what is it? Do you see that? See what? What are you talking about? Shh. Are you trying to scare me? It's not funny. Dirch, shut up. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> at the edge, at the edge of the woods there, look. He looks over his shoulder slightly worried about what he's going to see. You turn your head, Turch. And as you kind of throw an eye over your shoulder at where Diana is pointing, Diana, you watch as this creature on four legs stands upwards. growing in height and Arch, you see it and it's impossible now to take your eye off of it it's that 
it's that thing where if you blink, it will get closer. You, it, it will be in front of you. It, and both of you watch as it just kind of raises itself up. And where you saw four legs, a right arm just extends out of the tree line of the woods. <laughs> and you just see a gnarled, almost branch or twig-like finger point straight at you, Diana. And there's a screaming coming from the shack. And all you hear is Auntie Diana. I am betrothed. Come. And the finger gestures you into the woods. Do you see that? You saw that? Do I see that? You you haven't blinked. You did, did I hear what it said? Yeah. You've also heard the screaming coming from inside. Yeah, your your niece is not a very large tree, right? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that screaming, right? Do you think if we back away slowly it might <laughs> just get out any trouble? Okay, don't don't stop looking at it. Okay. Don't I don't stop. stop and I'm gonna like lean back and, and look in the window to see what's happening inside. Uh you see Elspeth lying on the ground and Violet and Radomir both look deathly pale, uh, crying. What's going on in there? Uh not sure. Two minutes. Don't stop looking, keep looking. My Don't blink. Nothing to water. <laughs> I believe in you, and I just like knock on the window real hard. Neither Mrs. Turner or Father Radomir are responsive. They just they're wailing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna look back at it and sort of come up in front of Dirch and like put my arm in front of him and say. Go, go inside the hut. They need help. And just kind of like shove him back. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Never run from anything in Mark that only encourages it. Oh, no. Dirt uh, slinks yeah. around the corner, making his way back. And you just see the figure hold up its left hand and it opens them out towards you. Diana. Come. Eric has brought me such a beautiful dress. You must see it. Diana. How far away is it actually? It's, a, it's about 25 feet. Oh, that's so close. The dress is made. <laughs> um, its head tilts slightly <gasps> and you just see out of the side of the head just what looks like a bramble of horns um, really gently I'm just going to be like I just give me two minutes, Anna. I, look, I I want to come see. I'm I'm very excited. Just just give me two minutes to collect my my friends here. <sighs> and it just watches. Oh, no. oh, I hate this. <laughs> Inside, you find uh, Mrs. Turner and Father Radomir just inconsolable. What is happening? Um, he's going to run over and like start slapping the priest's face. 
<laughs> Hello, what's happening? Hello, Chrissy, wake up. <laughs> uh, slapping Father Radomir, um, you come to you, you, whatever trance, whatever state you are in, uh, Radomir, you it's been knocked out of you. But do I still see the ghosts? No, there's no sign of Anna or Eric. Oh, the ghosts. No, they're it's outside. We need to go. Oh, no, no, no. They're, they're here. They're in front of us. And then mm -hmm. oh, my arm and my insides, my everything. Oh. Okay, great. We need to wake her up. What is wrong with her? Same thing, the same thing. Me, same thing. Her, and then, yes. Okay, Do well, this works. And he slaps her <laughs> across the face. Uh. Apparently, with no hesitation, Dirch, uh, you slap oh, the woman that you were terrified of. <laughs> back under. Um, I think he's more I'm terrified sorry. of what's outside. So yeah, fair yeah. enough. Uh, yeah, I'm you, sorry, you... don't hit me, <laughs> Mrs. Turner. You come to both Mrs. Turner and uh, Radomir. Do make sure you you're tracking your uh, failed endurances. I I am anyway, but it's just the next time you roll, I'm going to be adding another die. So even though I have my arm reset, it's still considered a fail because I roll. I did a fail. Oh yeah, roll. you're screwed every time from now on. You're it's cool. Father Radomir cool. is not a. Cool. It's not someone to rely on. Everybody right now. Well, yeah. <laughs> they don't know that. They don't know that. <laughs> well. <laughs> if I will reach out and grasp the, the, the leg at the table and take a deep breath and say to yourself and reach under her petticoats and pull oh. out a flask oh. and it, it's medicinal Just there's no time for this swing. swing he'll hold the out his hand takes the door. another breath the flask. oh my god you fucking alcoholics <laughs> <laughs> she'll pass she'll pa oh, I saw no, the door this, this, this is medicine it's and puts it back. She says medicine. Um, and says, "Listen, what's out, what's out the door? The thing, the thing. It ate fucking Anya and Eric, and now it's probably eating Diana. So we need to leave." No, Diana has come in the front door. Oh, okay. Leave so town, forget I said that. Miss Leave Town. Um, Let's leave town. Leave town. Mrs. Stern is going to look around and knowing that there's there's something out there and it's been eating people, and knowing that Elspeth has all manner of stuff here. And knowing that Elspeth has said that her great grandmother put the beast to sleep and told her the story, knowing that something might happen, she's going to use her investigate skills to have a look around her friend's house. And given that it's in disarray, she might see things that have been hidden oh. before now. She's going to look for goes. something that she can pick up and use. And if she can't find anything else, the skillet will do. <laughs> can, I, can I help? Because I have the craft skill. To oh. make something, craft me making something. Uh, yeah, so, so if, if she wanna... finds the shit, then I can help her make something. The shit. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna say, uh, Violet, uh, your relationship with Elspeth, you've been in the house before, so you already kind of know what you're, you might, what you're looking for. It's in disarray, I'll give you that. And you're investigate, you can roll three, uh, three d10. Um, okay. and Dirch, you can. Paper mache. It's <laughs> <laughs> not the time for arts and crafts. Lollipop nine sticks and, and PVA glue. Oh, it's beautiful. Nine and nine is eighteen, and three is twenty-one. Good okay, woman. You beat my ten. Um, you uh, kind of coming to, uh, and when I say uh, Radomir and Violet, when you've come to, you're you're aware again. That doesn't mean that empty heaviness oh, yeah. is still there. It, it, Some things leave a scar on the soul. There's hurts. a coldness, yeah. You, while Radomir panics uh, and takes a, another strong, heavy slug from the flask and Diana slams and shuts the door uh, as heavy as possible, uh, Elspeth still out cold on the floor, Dirch looking to make something a weapon, something that he might be able to use to fight with, um, or build or make something useful. You start combing through everything. Uh, Dirch gives you a hand lifting the cupboard up, uh, and there's 
strong smell of valerian um and mint and dried sage there's a load there's a load of things like a load of her herbs her stash seems to have been just destroyed and just splayed across the floor um but something catches something catches your eye as you're as you're looking around and you're drawn to the stone and the bundles of paper underneath it elspeth isn't a big reader or writer um and as you start rifling, as you kind of start searching through them, the paper is very battered. It's very weathered and uh, aged looking. And the, the markings, the, the ink, whatever it was that was used Wash to make room these, again. Has, Yeah, it's smeared a little bit. Um, but the sequence, you see the circle, you see the pyramid, see all these things you see that there's a, a wood and there's deer and as you're kind of looking through it the last page the pyramid the cave where this thing was the mountain the hill the, its lair in front of it you see flames and in the sky the sun and you have learned that the beast is weakened by daylight and fire and the window pane next to the counter that you were standing at, the same window pane that Diana was staring in at a few moments ago. Just there's a slight little rattling. <gasps> and what little El light, yep. Yeah. Elspeth would have been somebody who lived on her own, so, you, so she wouldn't have been starting a fire from scratch. She normally would have banked the fire before she went out. So there would be smouldering embers or a, a layer of ash and using whatever she has for poker to knock that aside. Um, I take the dried herbs because they're dry and they'll catch really quickly and I start chucking them onto the fire to try and get the fire to revive Radimir Dirch and Diana you watch as Mrs. Turner whips around her back to the window she hasn't seen it she hasn't taken notice of it or she's willing herself to just cast it out the back of her mind but the three of you watch as the single pane of glass just fogs up and a figure haunches down as mrs turner reaches for the poker and just gives the fire a couple of short sharp little swashes and the three of you just see at first what looks like the bleached skull of a bear but it's cracked and as it presses its snout against the glass the glass starts to crack itself and the bone opens and inside you see the face of a young man, Eric Blute, looking out, his eyes jet black, and a claw reaches for Mrs. Turner <gasps> to swipe. Did anyone else see Annihilation? Because that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> the bear thing that spoke. Ooh, that feels... Nifty. No, no, don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. You're... Um, the three of you have one action here before I take a swipe at Mrs. Turner. So has it reached through, It's reaching broken through, through the glass or it's, it's like spectral through the glass? It's breaking through the glass. It's try attempting to break through the glass. Yeah. Uh, I think Father Radomir is, he was obviously in bits, still is in bits, but this is kind of freaking, I'm like, let's go now. <laughs> and who is sturdier out of Dirch and Diana? 
who is like Diana. A stronger looking one. Diana. He's, he's just, without taking his eyes off this creature, he's just gonna like point a shaking hand to Diana and say, "The cupboard, the cupboard, up against the window now, up against the window now." Um, Dirt is just gonna be like react, reactive, and like use strike to hit it with something, whatever you your shovel nearest to hand. Yeah, my shovel. yeah, for some reason you're carrying a shovel. <laughs> You buy a handy old shovel there. It's one of those little <laughs> fold out ones that you know archaeologists take with them. <laughs> Violet hasn't shared with us that uh, it's weak or its weakness is fire and daylight now. No. no. Not yet. No. Thanks. No. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta smoke the fire. <laughs> yeah. this, is just, this is trying to get a fire going and we're about to die. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit cold in the shack. But surely, surely Father knows the fire purifies. Father's oh, not. Man. Father doesn't even know his own name at this point. <laughs> Father Ramalama Ding Dong. <laughs> uh, you instinctively reach for the shovel that's tied with the rope that you have around the back. Uh, um, Diana, what are you doing? Um... I want to, I'm going to shoot at it with my slingshot. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just going to grab whatever's nearest me and, and load it up and just take a shot. Okay. Um, so both of you are attacking the creature. It's, yep. You can both, so strike, so 2d10s and shoot. Uh, and I you could add the hunter as well. I, I was going to say, can I get yeah. three? Of course, um, I can shoot I am rolling right d20s. <laughs> um, oh, I was going to say because I have already survived once. You ran away. Right? Yeah. That doesn't count as fighting it. <laughs> That's fighting yeah, to live another day. In a <laughs> it's surviving. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> screw you, because I got twenty. Oh. I got twenty-two. <gasps> oh. oh but <laughs> with our powers combined. <laughs> I don't no, know. Look at that face. What did you get? 19. Oh, oh you both yeah. rolled so well as well. Oh, I know. <sighs> you. Oh, God. If we hit it, it at the same time. Why did it have to be the guest? The three of you are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they clearly got in each other's way. <laughs> We whack each other, yeah. It's, 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 it's close. It's like communication. communication. She brings in the shovel and, and my slingshot just pew, pew, right off it. You, both of you, uh, it, it, it's instinct, uh, Diana, you reach for your sling, you, you load it with a sharp stone that you picked and pocketed. You fire, it hits the glass and you see bounces off the creature's arm and the arm, Mrs. Turner, you hear it just crash through the window at this point. You see uh, Dirge just strike down with the sharp side of the uh, the shovel. Um, he swats at the creature. The claw reaches out and the fingers are like blades. They, and as you turn poker in hand, you see yeah. it, its face <laughs> actually, like it recoils for a second as the fire lights up. Uh -huh. It swipes at you. Um, I am going to block with the poker. Give, yeah, give me a... Do you have strike? I don't have strike, but she's been in situations when things haven't gone well. <laughs> <laughs> and she's had to hit that baby. It was quite a <laughs> No, no, you get, you get husbands who don't like being told oh, that they nice, can't have their nice, marital nice. rights for the next three months. Or husbands nice. trapped in grief where they've lost, they've lost the love of their life and the child. And they think mm. that the midwife has done something wrong. Can't say no so she's had to. So okay. she's had to be able to defend herself. Can't say no yeah. Okay. Be misogynistic if you did. It would be. <laughs> For the day that's in it, Declan. For, okay. Right. What I'm going to do is I would be rolling three d20. Uh, but because you are uh... situational awareness, you know. <laughs> I said, Always watch your back. Always. Watch your back. <laughs> you know, calm under pressure. You you rather than go. On. You are using fire, so I'm going to drop that to D12s. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so I'm rolling three d12s. I will. You're sturdy as shit. Uh, you <laughs> told a very compelling story. Um, <laughs> I will give you, and you've got endure. Okay, I will give you the three d10, but you have to beat my three d12. Okay. Okay. <laughs> come on, come on. She's a guest, Declan. She's a guest. <laughs> you have to be nice. 18. 15. Oh! So close. I actually the rolled. Trinity beat you. I rolled three sixes. Like, oh. literally six, six, six. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not joking you. I, I literally can't hurt. Oh, I'm so it's number sorry. Of the beast. Bye, Janet. Thanks. It was great having you. <laughs> back next time. She might be done. There are ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> she come back and haunt them because they're not doing it right. <laughs> if it eats her, right? If it eats her, then she just comes out the head instead. Yeah, it could be full. It might be the beast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she knows all the secrets. <laughs> you watch as Mrs. Turner... Uh, poker in hand, the tip of it uh, in flame, just having caught a little bit of the uh, the embers inside, whip back on hearing the commotion behind her. And as the creature swats at her, uh, she smashes the iron uh, and drives it towards the creature. It recoils a little, but the blades catch the old woman just around the neck and they bury themselves deep and blood sprays out. No! And you watch as Mrs. Turner half spins and falls forward. Poker in her hand, it falls to the ground with a rattle. And the pages she was holding flutter she around would, the room. She would have known where the <laughs> arteries are in her neck. Because she has endurance and she's pissed and she's holding the neck going, oh, okay. this is, this is Jesus. Really cool. So she'll get one more date. I will. <laughs> okay. One word. What? What's the word? Oh. Burn. 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 Yeah. <laughs> um, and she'll collapse oh, 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 and die beside oh, Elspeth, no. Rip, who she loved more than anybody else oh, after her husband oh, died. Oh, that's that's sad. lovely. That's so nice. I hope you're proud of yourself, Declan. I hope the three of you feel... We had The first time we have a guest on this podcast, <laughs> and the three of you leads her death. She did the most work, and she, she got killed. She did the most work. <laughs> she carried this whole thing. I know um, where it oh. lives, but we didn't even get to go there. It came to us. <laughs> it kind um, of had to. It was pressed for time. It's almost... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh. Upon here, like, seeing all this, I okay, need... we're getting like we're getting like thousand yard stairs from second father here, but uh, if he, we all heard her yell, burn, scream. You you heard the last <laughs> words that Mrs. Turner said were burn. Can I um, get my sensor and try and get a scoop of coal from the fire it's in it? Across his body like a fucking handbag. <laughs> <all the time. laughs> I want to. I want to try and laugh it off this creature. <laughs> He's emboldened now. <laughs> He's hammered is what he is. <laughs> Whatever works, okay? okay. You have to get in fairness, what's in that flask? You have a go with fire break. <laughs> <laughs> right. You have the, you have the weapon. I don't think it's necessary. Sorry, you have the item. I don't know if it's necessarily being used the way it should be, but you have that. <laughs> Um, can it not be used that way? It's no, on it a can. long chain. You, you can. You, I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying you can. Um, you shouldn't. <laughs> we've allowed, yeah, I'm pretty sure I shouldn't, but we're allowing it anyway. Uh, and da, 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 you can, yeah, and the, we said the sensor was at a two, so you can add the two to your roll. So Does that add a plus two or? Plus two to whatever you get. Yeah, it's okay, not I'm only rolling one because my skills are shite when it comes to this yeah, confrontation. So now, I'm actually, because you're, I'm rolling this as well um so okay. it's you've made it super complicated you could have just gone over scooped some up but now you're oh, like no. i gotta because it's gonna have like it's gonna like burst all over them okay. <sighs> you know what i mean okay and let, okay I'm gonna, whole... I'm gonna do a janet i'm gonna do a janet and explain how i'm gonna it's be good at this, okay? <laughs> he's okay. good at aiming okay he's good at aiming he gets communion into gobs he gets right. babies okay. Okay. heads right. into fonts there you go 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's good at aiming. Drowning children. Do you ever try and give a shaking old person communion in their mouth? He gets it right in there. <laughs> so he gets it right in the sweet spot. I think in the spirit, in the spirit of the Holy Violet, Spirit, or, the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, spirit. and yeah. only because I think you desperately need this. Uh, <laughs> because I rolled twenty. Uh, so I need to roll tens on my both my dice. Yes. Okay. Or at least, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to get a nineteen or twenty. Okay, I'm not going to look when I roll my first one. I'm just going to put the second one in there. And now I'm going to look. Okay, bye. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mrs. Turner. <laughs> I got 13. Unlucky for Father Radimir. Okay. Bye. Uh, you, Diana and Dirch, you watch as Father Radimir, completely and totally out of his mind, uh, <laughs> screaming in Latin. Oh. Grab the sense Don't make me. I, okay, just let me Google. <laughs> no, I'm not, not going to make you. <laughs> Swing the sensor, trying to like scoop up some of the, mm. the 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 coal that's on fire and fling it, sling mm. it. I, I'm not really mm. like, smash it, 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 smash, smash it. it. Sorry, smash it into the beast. The sensor swings. The chain comes loose. Uh, he hits the fire. It spits some of the of the coal upwards, but it doesn't hit the beast. And where your arm swings out, the the beast has now torn uh through the wooden frame of the shack and you see it standing there in its eight foot horror black and brown fur matted with muck and blood this gnarled twisted skull that's been cracked open and the face of a young man staring at it he with just black eyes two large antlers spinning out of the side of its head and forward like like pikes almost snarl and let out a deafening roar and as the sensor smashes into it it just bounces off the creature's chest and the arms lunge out and grab Radomir by the arm swing him up and over into the roof and as he goes up over the creature's head he brings him straight down on top of his antlers impaling oh. Radomir Right, I'm just gonna get comfier and watch this video. <laughs> Fuck the rest of this. Oh. Um, oh, there you go, good luck, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt is just gonna like. I think you got muted, Janet. I think you are, yeah. At least Fi went quick. You could take a while on those antlers. You may you get in the last. Christian. Um, Dirt is gonna take his shovel and just scoop a big load of the embers and like <laughs> over at the beast. Did you learn nothing from me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything else. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking shovel. What do you want? Like <laughs> um, while that's happening, can I sneak skill? Sneak. Okay. Um away. <laughs> <I'm sorry. Yeah. laughs> fucking out of the village. Like um, <laughs> The Siva, who he wants to live there? <laughs> uh, no, can I sneak actually out of the hut and try to get behind it? Okay, you can give me your sneak roll. Okay. Um, and I, I guess, Dirch, you're crafting a catapult out of the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> or at least yes, a I am. <laughs> That's generous. So what's that, three? Yeah. No, two. <laughs> <laughs> The Hail Mary went to the priest and but look I'll what happened us, to him. I'm also using strength. Explain, explain, give us a story, Eilish. Quick, quick, we don't have much time. Uh, You're good at digging. I'm good at digging. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but also, I have as a farmer. Yeah. Father Radimir, yeah. you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, the best ditch digger? So Who's the best ditch digger around the village? You, you are. are. It's dirt. Dirt. It's dirt. You are yeah, dirt. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason why they named me dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt from ditch. It, dirt. Was my, it was in my destiny. <laughs> oh, you know what? Fine. Fine. <laughs> Knock yourself out. You're beating, 27. A, you're beating a bloody 22, okay? Okay, Whoa. and what did you get on the sneak? Uh, Ross, what's 17? You're beating a 5, it's fine. Uh, that was a bad roll. Um, the creature... Uh, rears up um, and kind of lunges at you, Dirch. And using that moment, Diana, you actually slip uh, 
out the, the front door. You uh, dart down the, the small little hallway uh, and you, you fumbling for the door, you open and you kind of just slip out the back and you come round. Um, when you do, you see the creature actually flail backwards, uh, kind of thrusting his head back and forth. You, Father Radbury's body is just flung to the ground. Um, he's not wearing him like a headpiece anymore. Um, <laughs> it was a good look. It was. It was. Everybody needs a uh, thirty-something priest <laughs> on a flower crown. It's, the, it's this year's flower crown. Bring your ASOS near you. Uh, um, you you see as it it falls back and it starts to claw at embers and coals that have flung onto it and kind of burned into the skin and it literally just starts to like scratch at itself. Um. Okay, so I want to come up behind it. I'm going to pull my dagger and I want to stab it in the back, but like with so much force that I'm like pushing it into the embers. <laughs> like okay. We're, we're going to double, double do, okay. a stab and a shove. So I'm going to still, it's still going to be, it's still rolling, but it's burning. It's not on fire, but it's okay. burning from the, from the embers and the coals. So it's and I get, do I get to add plus two for the dagger? You do. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I'm, rolling I get to... I'm rolling my three D twelve. Okay. Because yes. Okay. Fifteen. Uh oh uh twenty whatever. <laughs> A twenty whatever it's dead. I did it. <laughs> um you you drive your dagger straight into its back. And as it does, you see that the the antlers at the back of its head just sort of twist back around and the skin and the fur rip open oh. and Anna looks at you and she just starts oh. crying as you drive the dagger straight into this creature's back. It immediately tries to claw at you. It, it tries to turn around. But the flames stoked by Mrs. Turner, given a bit of air from the bashing of the sensor. I'm trying to get everybody involved in this. <laughs> and with with dirt sort of shoveling coal onto it and flinging <laughs> again, worms Armageddon. Um, you push and you feel your boots actually sinking into the dirt as the creature desperately tries to claw back at you. It's one of its arms actually twisting back and it scratches deep into your shoulder down your uh, your arm and along into your wrist, you hold fast and you keep hearing, and say, Diana, no, my, my, Diana, my wedding, my dress, he loves, and you just, you shove it through the, the wall and the creature desperately holds on uh, over the, the open pit of fire and you press and you hear a cracking sound as you twist the blade and the creature lies over the flames and immediately its belly and the fur begins to burn and there's a horrid smell of sulfur just wafting off this creature. Its head spins around and you see that it it is a flame and its whole body begins to just leak this thick black liquid and it shrivels up and it starts to grow smaller. And it reverts. You see the face of Anna and Eric shift back into that of a wolf. Then a deer. And then a bear. And it continually gets smaller. And you just lying there in the pit of red hot coals, burning and charred. See the small figure. But looks to be like a lump of wood carving made of bog oak of a young man and there's silence and outside you hear a rooster crow and the bells from the church ring I'm not ringing them we did <laughs> <laughs> <He's bringing them. laughs> as oh dawn God. breaks on Visiva. Woo! The beast has been slain. 
some fucking how. And... <laughs> <laughs> that was divine inspiration. <laughs> From beyond the grave, yeah, Mrs. Turner really fucking... Uh... <laughs> Jesus, you've been dead 20 minutes into this. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, give me, give me two seconds. Um, you, you clamber out of the, the shack, Dirch and Diana. And you make your way, the shack on fire now, burning. The Elspeth, Mrs. Turner, Father Radomir, all victims of the beast, but it has been slain. And as you make your, your way back to the village, a crowd has gathered. And you tell them, you tell them of Mrs. Turner, who discovered in even the greatest of horrors, the beast's secret. And without her sacrifice, you wouldn't have learned. You tell of Father Radomir, who even in the lowest places that a soul can go, struggled to the very end. And you tell of Elspeth, the witch, and you tell of the story of the hungry bear and the cave. And people applaud and clap and cry and weep and mourn. And the Baron emerges from the house to a silence It is done. You have saved Visiva. We owe you, all of us, a great debt. And we will not forget those who gave their lives to ensure that my home, my lands were safe. And he just walks back into the house, oblivious and untouched by the deaths of three villagers. Several weeks go by. Small and the graves have been dug and the bodies returned to them. And life has started to return to the village of Asiva. And Dirch, you find yourself walking the town with a little bit more respect. Your name no longer besmirched, no longer a joke. Uh, one of the heroes, one of the saviors of Asiva. You've caught the eye of a young Caitlin Stanovich, niece of Christina Stanovich, the owner of the drowned duck. And she promises you that if you were to wed, the tavern would be hers and yours to share. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have to dig ditches or work the land any longer. And the offer is tempting. Diana. The claims you made in the drowned duck that night <laughs> fall on deaf ears. <laughs> Diana, the huntress, rumor, rumor circulates that you are a direct descendant of the great Artemis, <laughs> the hunter, mostly started by yourself. <laughs> nevertheless, you walk the street of Asiva head held high. Your only concern, your sister Iona, and news that your niece, her daughter, laid to rest. And life continues as normal, as normal as it can be for you. You hunt, you trap. And almost a year to the day, you find yourself trekking the woods north of Vesiva. And you feel a pain in your gut. An emptiness. A hunger that needs to be fed. And out of the corner of your eye, you see a small white rabbit dart into its burrow. And with your bare hands, you dig, you drool, and you hunger, and the beast will rise again. Ah! Oh! Ah! You have become the very thing you hate! <laughs> <laughs> Don't 
all tied up in a neat little package. <laughs> <laughs> like some oh crazy narrative. Um, <laughs> weird. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, and big, big props uh, to Janet uh, for playing. <laughs> for playing the, the game. Basically, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. I had a great time. Thanks for coming with me. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Not at all, but you... <laughs> See, that's how that's how that's how we do this from now on. Okay, we bring in someone. <laughs> Who knows what they're doing? Like crawling yeah, yeah, cats, yeah. Janet. That's the way. I, that's the way I describe my DMing style these days. I just I just have a bunch of feral cats running around a room, <laughs> and I have to just keep them inside the room. That's what I'm trying to do these days. I can do a that? wonderful what's, job of it. What's that? You need a break from DMing. <laughs> 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 I kind of like crawling cats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> details on where you can find and follow everybody, uh, as well as the creators of this game, Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor, are in in chat now. Big shout out and thank you to the wonderful uh, Louise for producing this uh, Thanks, game Louise. again for us. Thank you. thank you, absolute star. Um, we are D8 Dungeon. We are a group of tabletop role playing game enthusiasts here in Ireland who just love telling stories having a lot of fun uh, and creating content, just creating and telling stories. That's that's what we were about. You can catch our three regular shows, Rise of Forsaken, every second Monday, Romancing the Dungeon, our podcast out every second Friday, and Saving Grace, our spin-off show for Romancing the Dungeon every second Thursday. We had an episode just yesterday. So we're a bunch of busy bees. Outside of uh, One Shot Night Stand, we also organize once a month date night, uh, so the 8th of every month, we get together and we just hang out, we chill, uh, we play some games, we sit on our Discord chat and just hang out for a couple of hours and just pretend that the world outside our door doesn't exist for a little bit and we just come together and have a bit of fun, a bit of lighthearted. So check us out on the 8th of July. We have an upcoming charity stream at the end of July called Clash of the Streams, a fundraiser where we're looking to raise some money. Uh, for some really, really worthwhile causes. Um, so do keep an eye out for that. And if you'd like to get involved or volunteer, do come and check us out uh, on social media. You can find us at D8 Dungeon. Do come and check us out. Um, uh, massive props on once again to Dungeon. Janet for playing the um, unforgettable uh, Mrs. Violet Turner. Uh, and Louise has popped in the program for Octacon this year uh, in chat there as well. So do uh, pop along. It would be great, uh, great to have uh, to see some of you folks there. Um, and uh, big thank you to Amber, Fiona, and Eilish uh, for basically um, doing riding on, on Janet's do. coattails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, riding on Janet's coattails and hoping yeah. that someone else will save you from imminent danger. Uh, well, I think I miss my calling as a priest. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, um, you were all wonderful to play with. You were. Uh, you were amazing, and, um, Janice. You were I amazing. was a bit, a bit worried at one stage for projecting space. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a marbled poker face. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's full of usually, usually chiselled with like horror and like, oh god, what am I going? <laughs> what are I doing you, now? You also did the beast, the creepy, creepy, just oh. breathing. Oh, well. thank you for oh, that. Yes. No, thank Great you job. for that. That was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. I do. I do major creep really well. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are going to be doing uh, once a month. We are going to be holding a uh, one shot night stand. And if you are a, if you're involved in the community, if you're a writer, if you're a creator, if you're a gamer, a streamer, podcaster, if you are involved in gaming or geek culture and you'd like to join us at the table for a game, it won't always be me DMing. There'll actually be good DMs too, so don't worry about that. Be other Shut DMs. up. <laughs> These people might, you know, let me have a break. And No. Oh, okay. Take back the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> So again, do follow us and check us out on social media at DA Dungeon. Uh, Janet, before we wrap up, where can people find you or how can we learn a little bit more about Octacon? Um, I'm on Twitter um, at Sharo underscore IRL and Octacon is Octacon everywhere. Um, Octacon is also on Twitch, uh, Octacon IRL. Um, for the last two years, because of the pandemic, we had to go virtual. Mm -hmm. So if you have an interest in what type panels and what what are the types of things that you would see at an octagon take part have a look at the twitch channel check out the vods some of the stuff is up on youtube and um, we also look for people who we are a, com a community run event 
we're not a commercial event. We are very much any money that we make goes into running again for the next year. So everybody buys a membership. It's not a ticket, it's a membership. You're becoming a member of, of our Octacon convention community and family. Um, so I, I, always buy a, I always buy a membership, but if I can, I ship it a little bit extra so that Octacon can have concession prices and student prices so that we can be, try and be as inclusive as possible. But because it's for the members and run by the community, you can get to be on panels. You can make suggestions. You can make suggestions that you say, can you run something about this? Can we have a chat about that? Can we run something on the multiverse? Can we have a Lego workshop? You get to tell us what you would like to see and we try and make that happen. And if we can, we'll try to put you on panels. Is there something that you want to try or do? Come and volunteer with us. Um, I'm always happy to write uh, references for people that I've worked with. If you've got skills that you need to brush up on or want to give a go, we do have some opening uh, volunteer positions. So you'll find us all at octacon.com. And hopefully Yay. I will see you and some of these lovely people in October. Definitely. Wonderful. Can we run a panel on how not to do TTRPG? <laughs> how to derail <laughs> your DM. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how to break your DM. How part. to keep how to keep deluding that DM into believing the lies that this time. <laughs> well, I well, the other other convention which I've been on committee for, on and off for is GaleCon, which is Ireland's uh, premier um tabletop role play conventions. It is the bank holiday weekend of October. So it is Friday evening, all day Saturday, all day Sunday and Monday. Um, Galecon.com is the website and um, they'll be looking for submissions. So if you have a, a tabletop RPG one shot that you want people to play, write a submission come along and play the games. They're really beginner friendly. So anyone who sits down at the table has never played before. Like I didn't play the system this evening and Declan walked us through it lovely. Um, come along and, and get involved so that's the october bank holiday weekend for galecon and the 15th and 16th for octocon amazing awesome awesome thank you so so much um jenna for joining us and i had a great evening thank you everybody in chat thank you for hanging out with us thank you for your Thanks. time and uh we will see you on day oh god <laughs> <laughs> See you Monday for the next episode of. I'm actually so excited for the next episode, next couple of episodes of Rise oh, of the no. Stick and Romance of Dungeon. When you that say you're excited, that means something bad. Yeah, something bad. Is <laughs> but you also then know that that never works out for me, so I usually end up at those Fair. sessions really depressed. Well, I've learned a lot from Janet. I've learned so much. Taking my inner Janet into the next session. Damn it, Janet! I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> And on that note, we're going to love you and leave you, but we're actually going to raid. We're going to jump into another uh, streamer's channel and uh, we're going to jump into a really good friend of ours, uh, Zan, who is Yay, a wonderful Zan. storyteller, fantastic Zan. TM, and a creator of some fantastic content. So we're going to just jump in straight away. Straight away. Just do it, do straight it. away. Thanks, everyone. Do it. Mm. Bye. And we're counting down to five, four, <laughs> straight away. Three. Two. Not down. We're not one. counting down. We're not counting down. We're not counting down. It, I had to. It, it, there was a oh. countdown on it. Quit it. She said stop. <laughs> Never. Professionals. <laughs> We're done. We're there now. Do we do it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Did we? Is it? Is it <laughs> I, 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 oh no. <laughs> I don't know if I did it right or not. <laughs> Yay. We did it. Yeah, we're there.